Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California. This is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, author and radio host, Sandra Singh Lowe. With Gina Grad on news and Paul Bryan on sound effects. And now, non-birthing person, Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. A choice bigger than a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That is right. Handball, Brian. I'm yo daddy. Mm. Well, speaking of that, uh, Dawson has brought in a bounty from his garden. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, a horn of plenty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tomatoes, to zucchinis, or cucumbers? Zucchini. Zucchini. Damn. Zucchinis grow well. And uh, they're like weed. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let them go too long. They're like people. Too small, no good. Too big, freakishly bad. Mm-hmm. You want that sweet zucchini spot, yeah. right? You right. got to get them. The zucchini window. You leave them alone, man. They just become like a, a bouncer with a new XL sweatsuit, man. They just keep, <laughs> they just keep going. I, I, when I moved into my first house, that was one of the first things I did. It's like I'm starting a garden. And zucchini was one of them. And there's a couple of them. I just let them go. And they just became the size of like a shoebox. So then, what do you do with it? Is it bad? It's a Does mealy, it it's a oh, mealy okay. mess when it gets that big. Yeah. No! Yeah. Um, can I please say, first of all, I enjoy that we're all in jewel tones. But I am enjoying that particular shade of blue on you. Oh, well, thank you. Is that new? Yes. <laughs> it, I can tell, and I like you, it a lot. You know, lot. it's new because I've worn, I've only worn say, it nine times. That's right. <laughs> Your turn is li- this jacket inside out. <laughs> it's sort of a royal blue. It's sort of a, a, a I don't know, cyan. Midnight blue. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. It's becoming. It's becoming. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Your summer look. Brian, you look fine. The, um, <clears throat> so a uh, couple things. Uh, Sandra Lowe is going to come on. Love Sing her. low, I guess. Sing yeah. low. She, she's. I got it. <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> keep going. Coming uh, the bitch is back. It's the name of uh, her show. It's a one woman show, and we'll we'll take a look at that and talk to her about that. Yes, it's it's you can't find it online anymore. But her, um, she used to have this amazing. I won't even call it a show, but like a segment on the radio called The Low Life, mm-hmm. and she would do these beautiful um, sort of stories about like what's going on in her life and her kids and her family. And I just, I have adored her for so many years. This is very exciting. Well, good. We'll play a clip of uh, her on uh, Mar recently. Mm-hmm. And this, uh, is, uh, this is her explaining menopause. Her oh. explaining menopause on Mar. So instead of menopause being the change, it's actually the return. Your hormone levels scientifically right. are the same as they are as a preteen girl. So, you go so you're actually returning to where you were as a 12-year-old when you were like a normal person before the estrogen cloud came down and you started like cutting up sandwiches for people and folding <laughs> socks and getting, you know, food for able-bodied people who can get their own fucking food. And, it's like, and so... Like at 846, when that estrogen does this, you go, what the fuck have I been right. doing? Oh. Get your own fucking sandwiches, and that's when the leg of lamb goes out the window. So it is when the woman returns to normalcy. You, 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 she becomes you, the same you are going, narcissistic. Going Am I going it now. up? Going we become normal. You're, you're demonstrating. You give me a sandwich. That's, Security. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, there's I'm a sorry. menopausal <laughs> woman here. Yeah, I'm going to get my estrogen. I need it. Sorry. Sorry. What are you talking about? As someone who's only ever heard her on public radio, that was jarring. A lot of F-bombs. Well, be prepared for some pod bombs. I can't wait. So we'll talk to her about that. She was like famously fired by KCRW for dropping the F-bomb. I love her. That must have been a long time ago. I don't feel like... 2004. I don't feel like it's a fireball offense anymore, an F-bomb. Yeah, so I I can read you like the sentence she used it in. Because she meant to do an intentional bleep. Right. So she did say, but the engineer forgot to bleep it. And, and she the, got canned? And she got canned. Hmm. All right. So the, the line was, my husband, my soulmate, my roommate of 15 years, he sleeps late, doesn't listen, and moves my stuff around. But he does play guitar for Bette Midler on her massive new stage show. There are times when he stands within five feet of her. So I guess I have to fuck him. Because you know what? It's finally dawned on me, this tour, and then it's just dot, dot, dot. So she was, it was supposed to get blue. It's on the engineer, Dawson. Mm-hmm. Yep. Speaking of that, so uh, veggies. You're growing veggies. You're bringing them in. I notice you 
this may uh, divide the nation, but oh. I like a Roma tomato. Sure. And or I sure. like a beefsteak tomato. The round ones, not the not the grape the size plum one. size. Not the plum size ones. Mm. Even the medium golf ball, slightly bigger than a golf ball size round ones. I feel the skin is too thin. Mm. I like I like the meat. Anything's well that's an heirloom, you're, you're you're playing with fire. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't recall what they called these tomatoes, but the um, selection at the Home Depot when I got them months ago, they had one. No. You kind raise of raise them plant. from seedlings? No, it, I, it, the plant was like you a know a plant. stalk tw- one foot tall, probably put mm-hmm. it in the ground. Now it's four feet tall. Mm. There are at least seventy green tomatoes on it right now, like mm. three or four ripen every day, and then just set them on the counter until they turn nice and have, red. They're juicy. Have- They're so good chicken or rabbit wire around no i don't really have a problem with squirrels or anything wow. like that um my dog's get in the garden but sure. just to get me to throw toys for them when i'm yeah. working in there a little but, problem with mexicans but the, yeah. the chicken wire doesn't really keep them back at bay i got i got green onions mm. i got blueberries that are going nuts nice. um radishes cabbage uh damn victory garden what are the uh Russell? what are the little tomatoes called cherry cherry, cherry tomatoes got a ton of those not a cherry Uh-oh. tomato guy. Well, you don't like they're the good in salads, but they're tough to get with your fork. You got to cut them in half for the yeah. salad. All right, now here's the big question, and does anyone know what I'm talking about? The huge green caterpillars that would show up on the tomato vines. Yeah, sure. They're kind of furry. Yeah. The they're more just meaty and green and oh, huge, and but they're okay. huge and oversized. Do you have those? There, I believe there is one somewhere in that bushy tomato plant because one of the tomatoes that I picked had a hole of the approximate size of one of those. Well, so, Dawson, yeah. I can confirm that one of the tomatoes you gave me, there was a little friend inside, uh. and he was super cute. I didn't eat it, but I did put him outside. So nice. yeah, they they and he was little, so they do get in there. Can I give one quick? Little, well, the ones that yeah. get big get grotesquely big. I'm so glad I didn't see that yes. shit. Um, what I did with uh, Dawson zucchini last time is I just took a carrot peeler, like a regular vegetable peeler, and just peeled it all the way down so they were ribbons, mm-hmm. and then did an NSG NSNG uh, chicken alfredo. Mm. So you can just oh, wow. literally, you don't have to get a spiralizer, just peel it like ribbons and use that instead. I wanted to know, Gina, if you could make zucchini sticks, like fried zucchini sticks. Try that. I've I've never that done, zu- I will. I've never done zucchini because you have to sweat zucchini, but I'll do it for you. Sweet. Do it and uh, do the homemade ranch sauce. You got it. With now it. you're talking. All right. Well, the top 10 on the sports center has been corrupted. Oh. Oh, come on. Yes, in this uh, world where everything, you know, the Oscars has been corrupted and the Mm. Golden Globes and all of humanity. Let me guess, women's sports? Been corrupted. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of, well, I'll tell you where it started. And this is where we all needed because, um, you know, first they started playing soccer highlights and no one said a word. (laughs) And then they came for us. (laughs) Then they, uh... We all should have piped up when the soccer highlights made the top 10. Please don't. Um, uh, uh, misappropriate the Holocaust oh, sign. No. This is way worse. Okay. The top <laughs> ten making for you. And is, you said nothing. It's made for huge dunks. It's made for uh, buzzer beating three pointers. Yeah, it's made for alley oop dunks. It's made for over the fence catches. Over the fence catches. Uh-oh. It's made for you know field goals, fifty seven yards plus. Uh-huh. You know, it's made for a lot of lot One of highlights. Catches, okay. Hail Marys, Hail, great catches. Uh, throwbacks where the quarterback hands the ball off and then goes out on the route, oh, the flare yeah. pattern, <laughs> and they throw the throw the flag pattern to him. Okay, that's what's made for. It's not made for soccer. Leaf lickers. It's, it's not made for softball. <laughs> Uh, but I was watching SportsCenter's Top Ten two nights ago, and there was a softball catch. Oh, come on. It's the World Series. Mm, let's, well, but let's watch the catch. <laughs> okay. So it starts with 10, and 10 is a dude playing college this baseball, Open, lays out. Sure. Just completely lays out. I think a third baseman. High school baseball. Just goes, or high school baseball, and just, I saw an aluminum bat over the back, over the shoulder, laying out. Good catch. Now we got a, we got a dunk. We got an NBA dunk coming up here. Good. Solid. That's number nine. But I'll tell you what's better. 
Florida State and Alabama College softball. All right, now you got to watch the catch and then the replay because she fell down. Catch coming in. This is a fairly pedestrian softball catch. I played 2,000 softball games. Stop it. First off, if you booted that, that would be on you. That would be an error. That's yeah. charging straight for forward sure. and catch. That's not laying out. That is anyone who's played softball has seen that catch made four and a half times a game every well, every single not nine. Not only innings. that, but Chris, put up a still of the actual catch if you can, like an actual like where she makes the catch. If they flip the glove over, that's right. just a run. She had it catch. sideways. Just she just happened to trip. Yeah, catch. She had the ball. The ball was three yeah, that, feet off the ground. That is nibble height. She came in and caught it at uh, waist or above height and then got her pants soiled when she hit the turf. But she caught the ball. Charn- this is not a top 10 play. This is a pedestrian. Could have taken place at any park in Chicago, any time of the year. This kind of catch I would have made on four and a half beers. No problemo my entire goddamn career. This is not top 10. This is affirmative action. Yeah, they have shoehorned a pedestrian softball catch. This is not this is not home run robbing. This is not the over the shoulder layout. This is not the spectacular turning of the two after the after the backhand on third base. This is a come in twenty five feet, catch it waist high. This is it's been corrupted, Gina. I get it. I, I hear got you. bad news for you. Yeah, it's bad news for me. This is affirmative action for softball and women's sports. You must have better catches. You're allowed to show it in the highlights of the game. Not allowed to crack. Cannot crack the Understood. top ten. Call thank it an eleven. Thank God you put that student athlete in her place. That's right. <laughs> That's right. By all the, the way, all the coins she's making, the endorsements, oh, the sweet, sweet deals, the private the travel, bank, and yeah. all that. I'm gonna bring her down a couple notches. By the way, the Seminoles. How much mm-hmm. longer is that gonna last? I do not. I you do know not funny? know. I, th- I don't think the college college is so steeped in tradition. This is 125 years of like Seminole mm-hmm. pride or Illini, Illini pride. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, I don't think that ever changes. Oh wow! I, I, I would think, be surprised. Yo, I think uh, the Florida universities have actual deals with some of the native point. tribes, the tribes yeah. mm-hmm. and they do get a cut of stuff. Oh, so interesting. like they're they're in this. I believe it's either the Seminoles or you know so somebody's some, they're in on the game. On it. I get it. Native Americans love their merch <laughs> and they love hammering those checks. You just so said. Hmm. You just unearthed a uh, a memory of mine from my childhood when I used to be really into baseball. So speaking of unnecessary dives, I sent Chris the link. I'm about to look through it. It's about halfway through. Uh, it's Robin Yount, the uh, famous uh, Brewer. Milwaukee Brewer, used to play uh, center field for the Brewers. And there was uh, no hitter that was in progress. I think it was Juan Nieves. It's not important. Anyway, uh, Eddie Murray hits one to center field, and Robin Yount hot dogs it and like unnecessarily dives to like mm-hmm. make a spectacular play to save this no hitter. But if we can see the actual clip, like he could have very easily just whoop, laid the glove out, made a running catch. But he put a little razzle dazzle on it. He did an unnecessary dive. You're did it play. make the top ten? That's <laughs> my no contention. Center. Just answer the question. Oh yeah, that was extra. Robin gave a little oomph. I mean, it looks spectacular. <laughs> he could have made a running he, catch easily. A former shortstop. <laughs> it was already in his glove before he <laughs> <I'm> jumped. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed off a little at the end, but that was a pretty laid out. It was pretty wow. pretty laid out. I mean, he may have kept his feet under him. No, I'm Much po- better I'm, I'm than the chick shitter. from the... Well, I'm, I'm I mean, I, I'm a big Yount fan. <laughs> you know for that. And I'm, I'm saying, yeah. it, 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 you know, yeah. it's a little bit of an effort there. He may have kept his feet under him. But, misogynist. Yeah, but I would argue that he... If you try to keep your feet under her, because I've played a lot of center field it's it can be a little i don't know i don't know i I thought that that was pretty that was a pretty good catch it was a great catch he covered a lot of ground i'll give him that he's a great athlete played shortstop at one point uh so the uh what the hell else did i want to get into we got brewers uh, talking paul molitor yeah (laughs) uh let's see we have uh an unprepared we have uh Facetious. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I, I I remember hearing this. This was uh, up with uh, Adam Ray, Jam in the Van, I believe, Max Pata. Yes. And uh, facetious is a word I can use, but floating on its own, I was having trouble finding what it, how Out to of context. describe yeah. it. 
All right, here it is. Um, they spelled it wrong, but facetious is our first word. Oh, boy, what a one to get out of the fucking gate. Yeah. Not since someone wrote Belgium on one of those things have I been so fucking stymied. <laughs> facetious yeah. means you're smart in making fun of somebody? Is that what being facetious is? Yeah, is it like sarcastic? It's like sarcastic for people with a thesaurus. I don't know. <laughs> you yeah. had me a douchebag. I don't know why we need <laughs> facetious. Yeah. Oh, he's being facetious. It, uh, it's got a weird kind of a fecal kind of a sound to it. It yeah. sounds, it has a fecal sound to it. It so sounds the poop like, family, uh, for sure. yeah, Thank you me. went to the doctor? Yeah, I've got facetism. <laughs> oh, what's the deal? Oh, you know, I got to fuck, I can't, I got to wear loose fitting pants for a couple of days and stay off the unicycle. And he says, uh, why is that? He Le says, I got facetious. Oh, yeah. I got a facetious. Leaky asshole? Yeah. I, you know, he doesn't, those weren't the words he used. Oh. He said air it out. Yeah. By the way, is there a bigger cop out for a doctor than just air it out? You know what I mean? Yeah. What should I do? Yeah. Yeah, walk around nude for four days. <laughs> Go down to the beach, yeah. pull out a nut sack, you'll be fine. <laughs> Just yeah. it's got to get air. Yeah. Really? Why am I paying you a deductible if, <laughs> to tell me? I, if fuck it, I could just lay on the bed. I could have learned this on fucking. Uh, little house in the prairie. I feel sorry for anyone who has any condition that has to do with their asshole. You know what I mean? For sure. I have the most empathy for that. Yeah, you want to know why? You get no fucking, you, you garner no sympathy, only laughter and scoffing. Yeah. That's what asshole stuff does, it's right? Because it's a funny part of the body to have a syndrome or a disease or, because it, it sounds made up, whatever it is. Yeah, you have a number of holes in your in your body, right? Yeah, you got your ears, yep. you got your mouth, you got your asshole, right? Check. You say to somebody, I got a problem with my adenoids. It's fucking killing me. They're like, oh, man, I had that too. You got to yeah. gargle with salt water. And you go, I have an ear infection. I think it's uh, thrown off Oof. my equilibrium. I think I have tinnitus or something. There. It's a ring in my ear. Yeah. Then you go, my asshole is on fire. And I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, people say, going, you're going to die soon. That's what that means, man. Yes, and by the way, speaking of equilibrium, your ear will throw you off, but your asshole, that is your compass. Yeah. That is your... <laughs> That's that a, is your fucking center compass. By the way, that is a t-shirt if I've ever heard your of it. Your asshole is your compass. <laughs> when something's wrong with your asshole... It's like when they do those specials on the Devil's Triangle. That's so the compass is just spinning around. Like, yeah. why is Adam walking sideways? His asshole <laughs> is on the fritz again. He doesn't know north from south. That's right. No sympathy for the asshole. Yeah. Great it's first word. Great first ball. word. Huh? Holy <laughs> shit. We're right out of the gate. Facetious. Well done. If you work that into your stand-up, uh, do a tr your, it's your true brown star. Oh. Like you're your yeah. north brown star. Yeah. You can yeah. have that. <laughs> oh, it's not bad, quick actually. plug for Adam Ray. I know you guys uh, don't watch it yet, though I think, Adam, you have plans to. The show Hacks, uh -huh. which is getting better and better. Gene Smart <clears throat> plays this sort of washed-up Vegas comedian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And great... I love comedian Oh, this series. is fantastic. And great... Adam Ray featured episode. It's called 1.69, and there's a reason for that. And he just plays this fucking douchebag that she ends up kind of dismantling on stage. And it's it's a great episode, and he does a great job. Well, we shall be where 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 do we find That's it? That's HBO. HBO. HBO Max or whatever. All right. So um, a little bit ago, we had uh, ex Navy SEAL and author Jack Carr in here. It was about three weeks ago, I think, and he was talking about having to board a vessel <laughs> right. from a from a zodiac boat. Right. That, did he talk about falling off or like he did fall once. He yeah. fell off not while boarding the vessel, no, getting, but by from yeah. getting from one zodiac to the other. I think he fell in between. And he didn't think about drowning. He thought about how shaming it would be if yeah. he lost any equipment. Well he he talked about having all the ops information right. yeah. and everyone would have to redo their code mm -hmm. and whatever if they if he was compromised. A fate worse than death. Yes, which is good. Um, so he was talking about having to board these Iranian shipping vessels, these container ships or oil mm -hmm. ships or something. They'd leave at night. They'd leave in bad weather. They're trying and to be on. They'd have to pull up next to them right. while they're at full throttle. 
and uh, then they'd have to throw the rope ladder mm-hmm. over the top and uh, with the grappling hook, hope it grabbed onto oh. something, and then scale up the side of the ship in the middle of the night while no it was thanks. going 30 miles an hour in rough seas. Yeah. So this is him, but then I'll play you a solution oh. that uh, there's been a solution to this problem. Wow. Good so nice. the, nice. the boat, let me just see if we can uh, paint the picture. It's nighttime. Yep. Terrible weather. Terrible weather, and the boat's yep. moving at a full clip. I mean, they're not yeah, going half speed. Out. They're going as fast yeah. as they can go. And yeah. you're pulling up next to them in what kind of craft? Like a smaller, it's called a rib, a rigid hole inflatable boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's uh, like 33, uh, what is it, 33 feet? Anyway, it's like a small rubber boat, and uh, you can fit, it, like, I don't know, 8, 10, 11 guys on there, something like that. And you had a couple of them, and you'd zoom up alongside, and then you'd throw these ladders up and hook in the middle of the night, pull the hook away, and it would unroll this little thing called a caving ladder, which is about that big, and then you'd climb up <laughs> this thing, and banging off the side of the ship, hoping that it's holding up there with this little right. hook on it. And, uh, yeah, get over the side and then clear that ship. So Pete Brock from uh, Shelby fame and BRE fame, uh, who sends me crazy videos, who sent me the Phalanx uh, video game mm-hmm. video that we <laughs> erroneously cool. played, uh, <laughs> sent one that was more verifiable oh. about the uh, Royal Marines, I oh. think, uh, the uh, this uh, English, uh, I guess the, the, the Navy SEALs of England. And they figured out a way to board a ship that no, is he player one in this scenario. Little, yeah, this is a little, two person player. A little cleaner than this. We'll take a we'll take a look at it. So they show the they show the uh, rigid hole inflatable what a ribbed boat pulling up uh, next to the to the bigger vessel. No, it's which a raft, is a rubber raft. Rubber raft, and uh, one of the bigger vessels is one of their vessels. They're not experimenting with uh, you know Iranian container ships. And the one guy fires Whoa. up a jetpack. Huh. The jetpack is coming out of his hands. He's got two big that jets that he's wearing ass. on both hands. He's, I guess the propulsion system or the fuel is the backpack, but the actual lifting is done by his by fists. his hands, his, his fists. He's, he's holding them down. He's covering several hundred feet, flying in front of the boat. <laughs> then he awesome. lowers himself down with these thrusters onto the deck of the ship and then once he gets onto the ship that's when he secures the ladder and tosses the ladder off off the edge that's amazing wow. that's superman we're there yeah it's iron man it's iron He's man using yeah. his hands right. to like pr- propel right uh, it's a bunch of little mini jets, probably the same kind of little jets that I used to have back in the day in uh, model airplanes. I had little little turbine jets, and then they hang the rope ladder off the side, and then the people climb up. But- and that way you know it's secure. You're not the one having to throw it over. There's somebody up there waiting for wow. you, sort right. of w- overseeing this. That's pretty yes. sweet. That's awesome. And how else could you do it? I mean, yeah. if you really think about it. And, and I was thinking yeah. about the old way of throwing the mm-hmm. rope ladder with the hook on it. That's several thousand years old. No, oh, sure. Like that technology has oh. not changed since uh, people are trying to get over the Great yeah. Wall of China. That's some trebuchet shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. Of course, put the thrusters in the hands so you can control them. But, right. you know, fast, slow, oh, side to side. If it's in the backpack, like we always dreamed, it's hard to control. Yeah, and, and also, <laughs> there was that, whenever you'd see it in the movies, you'd always see the fire coming yeah. out of the backpack. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's the guy's feet <laughs> a little tough on the back of the calves and the coolie. That was really cool because you always think of, like, the, uh, you know, the Cabo version, you know, like the water for fun. It's like, how oh, are the they going to pull this? Yeah. yeah, this is a totally new level. I wonder, the question with that stuff is always, how much fuel do you have? Like mm. those guys just enough. <laughs> probably have less than three minutes, although you can get a lot done sure. in, in three minutes. But uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to see like awesome. technology yeah. working for the good guys yeah. or something okay. like that. I thought that was a really cool video. Why don't we have that? I think uh, ours? I, I think I have seen on TMZ mm. that uh, somebody invented a sort of multi-fan. So they, they took the, um, God, what do they call them? Not the droids. They call them the drones. Drones, drones the drones. They mm-hmm. took sort of the drone technology and put it on, put enough of those fan motors on there. So there's a difference. Like this guy was using a 
jet technology. Right. These guys are using like ducted fan technology where it's just a fan blade yeah. facing down, not an impeller and a Jesus. propeller and a jet, whatever. But there's footage of guys, although I don't know if it's ever going to come to the mainstream because the guy who's riding the thing, he's got to be a buck 35, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a buck 40. Yeah. And uh, I've been to anyone who's been to Disneyland lately. Oh, yeah. You're not going to get one of those. Uh, you need a seatbelt extender. Not one of those mainstream. heavyweights. <laughs> not one of the big fellas uh, on there. That is also badass. What he we're is at. literally cool. using propellers and just buzzing around the canopy of a. <sighs> Of a forest. That he's standing awesome. on a drone, essentially. He's standing yeah, on a drone, larger. and he's just using his body weight. It's kind of like snowboarding. Yeah. Just lean to the yeah. right, lean to the left. Wow. He's going above the canopy. I mean, he's got to be 80, 90 feet in the air. This is stuff you literally only do in dreams. Yes. Yeah. It's really it's really wow. interesting stuff. So uh, it's coming, wow. like uh, back to the future. That's right. And again, the batteries or the fuel, or I think it's all about, it's probably... It's probably a lot like where electric cars were 25 years ago. Like, well, it's cool, but the range is right. really, really short. But we'll we'll get we'll get to that, that range. That was my question. I know not of what I speak, but could that jet powered one we saw first be powered by like lithium ion batteries if you had enough of them or a, a, a advanced enough ones? I uh, maybe maybe with nothing we have today, but in ten years, you know, like who a knows? Tesla battery, like a, literally a car battery or a whole home battery. You had a big backpack on. Well, those batteries weigh a lot, that's and a I think point. that's, that's uh, I think that's a lot of the problem. But eventually, maybe we'll uh, we'll get there. Either way, um, damn impressive. That's it, badass. If I'm working on one of the ships where Iron Man boards, <laughs> I'm just setting my gun down and walking yeah, away. Like I'm what, whatever you guys got, that's <laughs> yeah. that's a little more than what we got yeah. you are, over you are, here. You are the captain now. That's right. That's right. All right. So uh, let's see. Let me hit uh, Humble CBD based out of Southern California. Humble makes insanely great hemp derived CBD products for any occasion. Humble is committed to helping you stay grounded no matter what life brings. Their line of CBD products is geared to help you focus, relax, recover, and more. Only for my listeners, Humble is offering 25% off your first order. So use the promo code Adam and use it to save on your entire order site-wide. So go to uh, Humble.com and you should go to, uh, sorry, HumbleCBD.com. That is HumbleCBD.com. Choose any of their products, whatever you need. You need to relax, fine. You want to get your head right, fine. You want to sleep a little better, fine. You go to HumbleCBD.com and get 25% off your entire order site-wide with the code ADAM. Stay grounded with Humble CBD. All right, take a quick break. Be right back after this. Do you want to be a part of Adam's next book? I have a Grammy-winning vagina. Submit your questions for Ask an Asshole by emailing them to asshole at adamcarolla.com. Please include your name, age, and location. Ask about any topic you need the Ace Man's advice or answers on. That's A-S-K-H-O-L-E at adamcarolla.com. Yeah, I started getting into some of those emails with uh, Lynch yesterday. I had a commute. I was in my car, got some downtime. Mm -hmm. So um, he picks up the phone and he starts reading me emails. And uh, they're emails, uh, they're on cars or transportation or politics or relationships or parenting. Like there's just all the different categories. And one, he, and there's stuff. Some stuff I've kind of heard before and then other stuff I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the questions I'll, I'll paraphrase was, um, how come you don't see men on the back of motorcycles with women driving? Mm. Women riding the motorcycle and the yep. guy on the back. Does not happen. If it does, it's a punchline in a movie. Right, right. It's Jim Carrey on the right. back of the chick with the Vespa. So uh, I thought about it a little bit. I thought, well, what, what is that? Yeah, I mean, I get it. But also, I, I started thinking, 
There's a lot of guys out there, and they're pretty damn progressive these days. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you turn on the TV commercial, there's the guy, he's got the man bun, he's got the kid, the woman's dressed, she kisses him, she's off to the loft mm-hmm. office, he's staying behind right. taking care of the kids. We've shifted a lot of the roles right. around. Sure. Um, lots of guys, you know, pretty woke, pretty progressive, um, lots of motorcycles. Mm-hmm. I see... Especially if uh, you walk up and down PCH on a Saturday, I see a lot of bikes going oh, yeah. up yes. and down PCH. Weekend warrior, you're and your, your choices are dudes alone or dudes with chick on the back. Yes. Never chick with dude on the back. So I started to really think, like, well, we're it's 2021. The women ride bikes. Uh, why aren't we? Why aren't we there? How come it's? How come it's uh, such a, an mm-hmm. anomaly? That's mm-hmm. such to the point where I've never seen it. And I said to Mike, I said, uh, Mike, you know, there's a lot of guys. I make fun of them all the time. They got a lot of bracelets, mm-hmm. you know, they're uh, hipsters or mm-hmm. woke. No they're stew. they're uh, wives that yeah. they're yeah, not eating stew. stew. They're wearing bracelets. Wife's maybe making more than them. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not working at all. Maybe yeah. they're trying to get their uh, vegan cheese business off right. the ground. Their chia pudding. While she fucking goes in and subsidizes right. it. Whoa, there's a lot of those guys. Why wouldn't those guys be on the back of the bike? But on the back of what bike? I, mean, I said, those guys uh, are too big of pussies to have a motorcycle. Uh, They're too fucking scared. <laughs> so, those guys are scared of everything, and they'd never allow the old lady to have a motorcycle. It's too dangerous. So the populace you're drawing from, motorcycle riders, already have made that decision. Yeah. Right. So the guys who say... I'm going to ride a motorcycle are the old school right. guys yeah. who are set in their ways. The folks who, the, the guys who would gladly hop on the back of their woman's bike would not let their woman have a bike. It would be too dangerous. They have kids. You can't ride a motorcycle. So Interesting. that's the group because it's not that half the country isn't perfectly willing to get behind their woman on a, on a bike right. or, or anything else. It's that that half or it's too Isn't scared down. to ride a yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. It's a non-star. Yeah. And that's why you don't see it. Uh, wow. There's a book preview. Yeah. <laughs> there's there an excerpt. Go. <laughs> well, it was kind of funny because what happens is, is I just drive and Mike spits stuff out and I go, hmm, I never thought about mm-hmm. that one. And then uh, something opens up and he starts typing and I start spouting. And uh, next thing you know, we have our sixth book. Uh, the other thing I was talking about was, uh, as it pertained to that, is um, where you put your hands as a dude who has to get on the back of a bike of another dude. Don't you hold on to their like belt buckle in the back? Well, I uh, I figured out that if you got your hands uh, around their waist, mm-hmm. it's a date. You may be gay. Yeah. You probably a bottom. Put the hands on the shoulders. Mm-hmm. Now you've been upgraded to buy. Right. Uh, You're top. Arms folded and smoking. <laughs> You're the straightest <laughs> dude on the fucking planet. I was going to say, put the guy in the chill cold, but that won't go, that won't <laughs> yeah. go very long. I've seen, I've definitely seen the, I don't want to do this at all, but I'm compromising. Hands guy with in the back. One yeah. hand mm-hmm. holding the back yeah. of his seat. I, I was telling Mike yesterday, I grew up seeing dudes frequently smoking on motorcycles because that because everyone smoked and the guys who smoked had motors i mean these are guys that you know yeah. health wasn't at the top of their, yeah. of their uh, list sure. right safety wasn't so they rode bikes and uh and they smoked yeah which is a which is a power kind of move, power look when back in the day when i first moved here the person i was with had a motorcycle the the gold wing because we got into it on how to pronounce that not the gold wing. right and um i kind of think this might be my badass power move we would go on these long rides and with the helmet and with the noise and the freeways, I would fall asleep on the wow. back of the bike. Wow. I have a touch of narcolepsy, I think, but like I thought like I am so loose as a goose, I would fall asleep on the bike like on the way to San Diego. Yeah, I've I've ridden on the back of many a dude's bike just because when I was growing up, nobody had transportation and then some buddy or some point your buddy Chris would get a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. And he's going to come pick you up. It's like, well, what are you going to do? You don't have a you don't have a car. I used to tote Ray around. Ray would frequently ride barefoot, Jesus smoking Christ. on the back of my With motorcycle. Shorts. Fell off the back of Chris's <gasps> when he was trying to light a cigarette, and Chris gave it a little gas and just kind of popped him <laughs> barefoot again. 
And and distinctly remember taking that Honda 404 to the Arco in North Hollywood and putting in like 61 cents worth of worth of gas. Um, All right. We got some calls up here. Oh, here's something. Somebody tweeted me this and I've always been interested in this story. The Ray Carew story. Yeah, The son's in the news. Yeah. The Ray Carew story is a standout wide receiver for the Panthers. Pretty sure Panthers. I, I think. Gina, remember this one? I only know him from the Hanukkah song from Adam Sandler. Ray Carruth, he converted. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, no, that must no, be. no, no, no. No, Rod Carruth. Rod oh, Carew. shit, never mind. Very different. Very different. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> Sorry. See, Sorry. my mind my mind was like, oh, didn't Sandler do an updated he version did. of that? No, and that so was my bad. I went with Gina, Don't benefit of the doubt. Me. Like I was like, oh, in the updated that, one, did he touch on Ray Carruth? Don't listen to me. Standout wide receiver, got his uh, baby mama, right. Preggers. Oh, he did not convert to Judaism. Um, took, He's been in the joint yeah, a long time. I know who we're talking about. Yes, yes. Took her out uh, to a movie. See, right, yeah. Uh, took her back home, uh, made sweet love to her. And then? Then sent her on her way. Right. And along the dark highway right. had someone intercept her. At nine months pregnant and just unload a clip into her while she was uh, sitting in the car at the stop sign. That's, That's kind of a conversion. He can he converted right. her too. That's yeah. True. Now the son Here's the catch. who was in her was yeah. also shot up, brought her back, uh, brought brought her to the hospital. She was st- the kid shot, or did he suffer from like blood? She stopped you know, providing him blood or amniotic fluid. Uh, I never. I never. I didn't get to that one. Either I way, he was affected. Out. Developmentally disabled. Yes, and uh, they were able to birth him. Wow. Um, she stayed alive for 24 hours, sort of long enough to say what happened. Uh, Ray Cruz showed up to visit the hospital with his girlfriend. Bald. Like, Ballsy. Wow. Brazen. And uh, then when I believe... He said from prison, well, that's still my son. Like, I'd still like to have a relationship oh, with him. Oh, would like, you? Legally. Oh, okay. And then he got off. He The kid was severely disabled, given to Grandmama to raise, I believe. And uh, scant 18 years later, is graduating high school? Hey, Robert, 40, Castro Valley. Miho. Miho. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Chancellor, he's 21 now. And he's 21. put in the work. And would just he just walked across the stage with somebody helping him and was able to uh, graduate high school. It was really wow. inspiring. I hope he sits on a park bench somewhere, and some guy sits next to him and they're complaining about mm. the, what happened before they were born. And like my mom smoked uh, unfiltered menthol cigarettes. Oh, that's what you're that's why I have a she bit of half OCD. A glass of wine. Yeah. Yeah. So a touch of ADHD. She used to drink sherry to help her go to bed mm. when she was seven months pregnant that's with cute. me. Hey, Robert. Oh, hold on. Robert. Yes. How is So how is he? Is he able to walk and everything? Well, he, he's got cerebral palsy and some other issues, but uh, from pictures that I've seen, he has like a, like a walker that you see like an old person use. Mm-hmm. But it, in the video that I saw, it would look like somebody who was either a teacher or a principal was walking him across the stage, but he was able to walk across the stage and, oh. and it looked like he was waving to his grandparents. It's really sweet. I wonder, is, is he able to speak? That's a great question. Huh? You know, I'm not, I'm not really sure, and it didn't really go into detail in the article. It just kind of said he worked really hard in order to get this degree, and it wasn't like they handed it to him. Well, what would they say? It says he can only speak. Of course. He speaks only a word or two at a time. Did... Uh... That's true for all of us. Yeah. Um, did uh, you try to do more than one at a time? <laughs> Just real word off. salad. That's yeah. really hard to understand. Jibberish. Do all the words at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I know where they're heading, though. Yeah. Is um, So we, did we figure out whether he was physically shot? I mean, the guy just stood next right. to the car window and just, just kept unloaded, and it seemed almost bizarre if he wasn't hit. True. But we, I don't know. And then didn't Ray Caruso say, "When I get paroled, I'm going to be reunited." And didn't he get paroled, or isn't he getting paroled? Yeah, he's he's free. He he um, oh, nice. he became a free man. He's given 
he's given his son several thousands of dollars through the court system in 2019. He still no. owes the Adamses, the, the family, millions in damages, though. He has had no face-to-face contact with his son um, since he was a baby. Yeah, if you were the grandparents, in, in what on what planet would you allow this man to see this child? Oh, my God. And the guy who was the trigger man, he's still in prison. Yeah. But yeah, the guy who hired him is, has been paroled. That's yeah. nice. Uh, the one with the beef. Yeah, Ray Cruth. He moved to Pennsylvania to live with a friend. <laughs> How nice. Wow. It's nice to see him lying on his feet. Yeah. Hey, Robert. Yes. It's such an insane decision-making process because he was a good wideout in the NFL. No. Oh, he was a wideout. You're right. I thought yeah. he was a DVD. You're 100% right. <clears throat> he was a wideout in the NFL, and he was, he was good. Okay. You know, and people knew who he was. He had some contracts, you know, definitely could have, could have had some good paydays, you know, could have, could have done that. Question, did the defense ever blame um, CTE? No, I don't, I don't think that was young. part of it. He okay. was young. And, uh, and the grandma... He, uh, she says that I'm hoping someone will tell Ray about the great milestone that Chance- Chancellor, uh, the son, is reaching. If he reads uh, the news. And as always, I'm still open. Maybe we can have some communication. She's a saint. The And is that the grandma of the woman who was executed or yes, the, mom the mom of the woman who was executed? Yes. Oh, what, the mom. The mom. I wonder uh, what Ray's mom is <laughs> doing. I'd like to meet Ray Cruz's mom and go, hey, nice job. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I think she knows. <laughs> Let me tell you something, just to put it in context. If my adult son pulled his ponytail through the hole in the back of his ball cap, I would be devastated. Okay? And I would look at myself as a failure as a, as a parent. Right. Okay, but for you. And how do we quantify this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, thanks, Robert and Castro Valley. Robert, mm. Castro yeah. Valley. Thank you. I want to appreciate that. And I don't know if you tweeted that to me, but I saw it. No, no, no. I, it's it's funny because I actually was the first person to uh, talk about this a long time ago. I think when AJ was on, and I said, "Oh, Ray Cruz getting out of jail. Are you going to mark it on your calendar?" And that was kind of like the first bringing back Ray Cruz on the show. Talking I, about. I think it may have been on a behind the sports, beyond the sports, true sports, real sports. Real sports, probably. Probably. I saw it, too. An expose. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. Let's talk to Carlos Forty from San Diego. Carlos? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody doing? First time, long time. All right. Yeah. You know who said, hey, hey, hey? Uh, for, uh, um, who did? Hey, hey, is it from, uh, uh, that's, uh, she's. It's Dwayne. Uh, yeah. What the hell is the name? Of the, no, what's I think I think rerun said, "Hey, hey, hey." From what's Ooh. happening? Oh, well, we got to figure out from it. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne was uh, not. Hey, Raj. Hey, rerun. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey. it is Dwayne. <laughs> Somebody is, uh, check the tape. We were more easily entertained back then. Clearly, Dino Mike. You just sit there until the fat guy said, "Hey, hey, hey." <laughs> that now, Raj, so weird. You're gonna take D to the movies with you. <laughs> so. Catchphrase is real weird. Moment in like 70s, 80s sitcom. What you right? talking about, Willis? Yeah, Dynamite? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wait, uh, that makes me think. Did white people have catchphrases? We tried. Yeah, it didn't mm. work. We tried. We the, the, I, I, my, I, There's the catchphrase that everyone knows and you ubiquitous. I mean, right. we had A and Fonzie, right. but there's yeah, the ones that they never committed to that didn't catch on, which yeah. was John Stamos from Full House oh. would go, Lord, have mercy, but right. it never... They'd only or, use it every seventh episode, right, and right. it just never got uh, any traction. No, but you're right. Cut it out. Th- mm-hmm. Didn't the little one have, like, a come on, dude, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah one, again, of the Olsen, mm. one of the Olsen twins. You're right. But if we have to debate it. That's a good yeah. point. Carlos? Sorry. Hey, how's it going? Hey, so, hey. Okay. Um, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, was, uh, I was calling because uh, a few days ago you guys were talking about, like, having a bad, like, 21st birthday. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, on my 21st birthday, uh, under my mom's wish, I gave my brother's eulogy. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. Yeah. We have a winner. Wow. Honey. <laughs> How, uh, yeah. So what happened? I hope your brother was, was he al- 70 years was older he than you. <laughs> <laughs> was it like so, Moonstruck? Um, <laughs> so this happened back in 2001. And so he was, uh, he was 19. Oh. Yeah. And he basically got 
shot in the back by the police uh, where we used to live in uh, in National City, which is in San Diego County. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, you know, he was running away from the police, and uh, one of the officers came up uh, on him with the with the with the cruiser, and he slid over the hood, you know, mm-hmm. like in the movies, and then he just kept running in the the cop when he stepped out of the vehicle, just shot him in the back. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was it. Did you guys lawyer up? Did you get a payday? <clears throat> so what happened was is that the lawyer started reaching out to my mom, mm-hmm. um, and she did uh, she did lawyer up. And and what happened is a weird thing, because everything was unexpected, right? And so my mom, um, when she started going to court and everything, they just started talk, speaking really bad about about my brother. I mean, you know, he was a gang member and everything. So they were just saying the worst things they could about, uh, you know, about gang members uh, so that they didn't have to, you know, so they can reduce the payout. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. They did end up, um, they did end up paying her, I think it was like 200000 and uh and it was the money that she used to get out of uh, living a, at the apartments because we grew up in a, living in apartments and, and, and in 2002, we moved into a house with that money. Wow. And, uh, yeah. How did you feel about giving the eulogy? You said it was your mom at your mom's request. How did you? So, um, I, I, at the time, I felt, I felt okay about it. I, I kind of felt good that she asked me to do it. Um, uh, you know, at church and everything, you know, I did, you know, some public speaking. Um, so, uh, I felt okay about doing it, and I wanted to talk, you know, I wanted to say good things about him, and uh, so I felt good about it. But, um, you know, looking back, now that I'm about around the age that my mom was when everything happened, I, I don't know, it's just, it feels like it would be hard for me to ask somebody to do that. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I did it, and... and uh, well, let, let's see if we can uh, cut your mom a little slack. The... The, yeah. the funeral was like on a Sunday. I mean, was it, you know, if it was on a Wednesday, I got a little beef with your mom because she should kick it back to Thursday right. or kick it up to Tuesday. You have those options when you're not Jewish. You mm. can just kind of put it whenever. Well, we don't know they're not Jewish. Oh, that's true. true. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Are you guys in the tribe, Carlos? No, we're not. Oh, okay. okay. We, we, right. we no, had to be the, sure. The, was it, was the, it on? Uh, it was on a Monday. Oh, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. And uh, and she probably wasn't much in the mood to celebrate you. Mm. No. Well, here's the other uh, thing. Uh, we're, uh, I'm Jehovah's Witness, mm. so um, we don't we don't celebrate our birthdays anyway. Right. Mm. But you know, it, it is the age where now I'm legally allowed to drink. So I kind of wanted to, you know, even though it was a, it was going to be a Monday, I kind of wanted to do. A little bit of drinking. Well, I'd, I'd suppose you'd need a drink after that eulogy. So hopefully, you at least got your drink in. Yeah, it was just it was just a whole. Wow. Was, well, Carlos, you beat us all in the bad twenty first birthday yeah. celebrations. Yeah. Are you doing okay now? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good. You know, I'm married for fifteen years. Uh, July first. Wow. Uh, and uh, too bad you guys you can't know, got celebrate. My, got my own house. <laughs> Are yeah, you, we're, are we're, you still good. Jehovah? You're able to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and things? No, no, I'm, I'm still a witness. I think my parents were sort of de facto Je- Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses. I don't think they <laughs> followed yeah, many of the, the tenants, but right. this the non-celebratory one, right. they, 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 they had that Early one locked often. in. Yeah, they were grandfathered in. Well, thanks, Carlos. All righty, you guys have a good one. Sorry we to hear you. about uh, your brother. Uh, Thank you. Sandra Lowe has uh, joined us a little bit early, so I'll tell you what. Let's not. Let's not. Oops. Let's not make her wait. Let me just hit uh, Geico, and then we'll uh, bring Sandra in. Uh, Geico. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Well, sure. You do one or the other, and then there is your automotive policy. Well, how about you get your bundle going? Take your automotive policy and your homeowners or renters insurance and uh, put it together. And bundle, that's what they thats what they call it, Geico. And uh, hell, summer's up upon us now. Why don't you take a little uh, road trip? I think we had a road trip story sponsored by Geico. Chris, you got a yeah. road trip story? So I know I've talked about taking that school bus on a road trip when I was mm. 20 with uh, 15 of my friends. Well, two years later, 
Hey, ambitious. I mean, you bought a school uh, bus. Yeah. You pulled out all the seats. Oh, yeah. Pulled out all the seats. So what happened was we just wanted to go on a trip, and there were a lot of us. So we thought, and my neighbor around the block was selling a biodiesel school bus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And we all pitched in two hundred bucks to buy it wow. and, uh, and get yeah get it fixed. Was it up. roadworthy? Uh, it it kind of was. See, it was registered as an RV. Oh sure. Which mm-hmm. which helped. And yeah, we yeah. took out all the seats. You know what we do, Adam? We since uh, since we got it for a summer trip, we bought it like in December. So we were we were getting hired out to do proms. Mm. We were we were, uh, we were yeah we were using that bus for sure. Any, yeah, any any way we could, we emptied out all the seats. And since it was biodiesel, it was fill. It had barrels of vegetable oil <laughs> in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we took a sharp turn, Delicious. and all the vegetable oil spilled <gasps> oh. all over the floor. Uh. I had to just fill the thing with uh, with kitty litter. And, uh, Good Lord. Yeah, but we took it out for a summer. It was fun. You persevered. Having worked at a grocery store, oil spills are the worst spills. Oh, yeah. Olive Gotta oil, be. veggie oil. Viscous. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, yeah, so the kitty litter helped. But anyway, two years after that trip, three of my friends wanted to go to another road trip, just a smaller one where they would go to all the baseball stadiums. And we had a goodbye uh, dinner for them just because they were going to be gone for a little over a month. And uh, as I was sitting there, they were telling me about all the cool stuff they were going to do. And they were leaving at 6 a.m. the next day. And uh, and at 8 p.m. after the dinner, I go home and I give them a call. I'm like, is there room for one more person in that car? And they said, yeah. And I packed up all my stuff. I met well, up with them. Not a regular s- size yeah. person. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and... Uh, and I packed up my stuff. I went with them. I quit. I had two jobs at the time. I quit them both Whoa. the next day when we were in Phoenix over the phone. I was just very, yeah, very wow. spontaneous. Loose and fancy free. Yeah, my girlfriend at the time, she was new. She wasn't very happy with me that I did that either. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, one of those impulsive things that I just, I how felt many, like I needed to go. How many ballparks? Well, I think we all sort of miss those days where you could just give in to impulse. Oh, yeah. You know, Best. we're going to Vegas. Yeah. We're going yeah. to Vegas. I, I still warn people because I've. We're driving to Florida. <laughs> I I've done the Vegas thing, and I was thinking about talking about this the other day, which is the the Vegas or the any road trip. It, it sounds great. Our thing was we we're going to finish our shows at the Acme Theater mm-hmm. on a Friday night. We we're going to get in uh, Katie Donahue's Honda because it was newish, mm-hmm. and we're going to take five people and we're going to drive through the night. We're going to go to Vegas. We walked into the casino. It was five fifteen in the morning, and we like we want to che- we go. We want to check in. We've been up all night. Good like, luck. Come back at three p.m. Ten hours. And I remember going like, "Oh yeah, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> we don't have any money. We can't do anything." We sat in a coffee house for you know eleven hours, and it, it was so. And we'd all been up all night. We did oh, two shows God. at Acme. Rolled in at five yeah. thirty. Like I can't wait to hit that. That's we no we were going to put eight people in one room, but. The room is not available till three in the afternoon, which you got to think about when you're going to land, not necessarily when you're leaving. Speaking of road trips, one of the best little observations in the movie Swingers, where like the, they're they headed out with yep. piss and vinegar, and yep. then two and a half hours in, they're like, oh, <gasps> Christ. Swingers, baby. Well, thank you, Geico, for uh, sponsoring that uh, road trip at geico.com. All right. Sandra Lowe is going to uh, come in here and uh, wax poetic about everything, and we'll do that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, I finally got one. It's been years. Rich man, poor man. Having a strong opinion about a judge. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Not for the middle class. That's very good. Very true. <laughs> Sandra Singlo has joined us. The show, The Bitch is Back. It's streaming on demand June 23rd through the 30th. And you can get tickets and information by visiting thebroadstage.org. Good to see you. Nice to be here. Uh, I was noticing that you were raised in uh, Malibu. Oh, yeah. And um, I've been spending some time in Malibu and walking around a lot and looking at buildings, looking at houses they're building on PCH. One was for sale for like $49 million. There's another one, triple lot one they're building with big caisson rigs and stuff. Mm. It's got to be Someone's going to win $65 million. Uh, but if you talk to guys like Rob Lowe, who grew up out there and are about our age, he's like, we rode horses. It was kind of a podunk town. Mm-hmm. There wasn't much going on. Uh, so tell us, we'll start and we'll move toward 
the future. We'll end up in, in Pasadena. But what was Malibu like in the 70s? So Malibu uh, Middle School in the 1970s was horrific. It was Malibu Park Junior High School. There was no high school. So what many don't know is that there, I was one of the poor of Malibu. Mm. So my father was a Chinese engineer from Shanghai, and he worked at Hughes Research Labs that was up there. So we nerd kids were flung into school with, they were even movie star kids then in the 70s, like Flip Wilson's son was there, wow. Christy McNichol, and it's kind of like, and my computer date, he never showed up, was, it was the first time they tried that, was Chad McQueen. Wow, okay, Steve so McQueen's you, son. You can imagine, you so my bullet. mother is, the pun. <laughs> my mother is German, she's a head taller than my father who's Chinese, we are so nerdy, the kids are Chinese German so we look Hispanic, my mother's <laughs> dressing us up in Heidi of the Outside Journals and Clogs because she was a fan of The Sound of Music, Limburger Cheese Sandwiches, <laughs> oh my God. House, and You really and wore I, a dundle? Yeah I, yeah, I did, and those, those cur- like, Ringlets? things, those ringlets. <laughs> I no. about. So, and Chad McQueen, so middle school is already so horrific, and then not only are your peers movie stars, Sean Penn was vice president of the boys <laughs> thing and, and president of the surfing club, and so Chad McQueen, his dad is Steve McQueen, and his mother's Allie McGraw, and she speeds up to school in a red convertible afterwards, and he's their son, and then he's the computer date, he doesn't show up, he's he just, uh, you know, it was really horrific. That's well, devastating. Yeah. First off, his name is Chad McQueen. So no. even if he wasn't the son of anyone, his name would still <laughs> be cool. Chad He's McQueen. He's a big man on the, campus. The, yeah. The coolest name yeah. of the 70s. And also, you brought up Flip Wilson. We were talking mm-hmm. about catchphrases or yeah. calling cars. He would do Geraldine, right. the yep. black woman, and then he'd go, back off, sucker! Right. Like, that was his, you can find Geraldine saying back off, and then he'd go, woo! Like he could get away with so much that wasn't entertainment back then. But I think he'd say back off, sucker, or some version of that. But, and, but the, get back, sucker. Yeah, and, and Lee Marvin. There Lee would be Marvin. parties at Lee Marvin's house, and the children were scared because he would be like so drunk all the And me, he was not a happy drunk. He was like a mean drunk. What? Wow. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Emilio Estevez was nice. Sure. So I'd say still he was is. like nice. Mm. Um, it, Rob Lowe was her. So it was like, but it was really surreal. And I think even, you know, at that particular time, these, these kids were already kind of famous well here's a hypothetical question for everybody and i for some reason i have some weird recollection of lee marvin being one of the first palimony guys (laughs) really there may have been a famous lee marvin case with palimony yeah and that he lived in malibu and he had like a living girlfriend for 10 years and then they broke up Mm -hmm. and she's like well we didn't get married but But. i I blew you 1300 times it's gotta be worth it's gotta be worth a car I think it was Lee Marvin. I've, it's it's just a ske- sketchy recollection. So here's the hypothetical. Would you rather be the dorky kid that's growing up in the coolest place in the world with the coolest people? Definitely, I mean, doesn't sound great. But on the other hand, dorky kid with just a pool of dorky, dumb, poor kids. So I sort of grew up. Yeah. That's, right. not, that's not great shakes either, because right. you don't get to go to Lee Marvin's house. Right, you go right. to someone's shitty apartment in Van Nuys. <laughs> yeah. You, she, Sandra has way better cocktail stories than you do. Yes. Like cocktail party stories. Well, I don't think we did many of those, actually, but it was very unsupervised in the 70s. Yes. So that the right. ki- I mean, girl, I mean, it was awful. Like the children, like Bob Dylan, or and awesome, kids, depending on and <laughs> running around and, you know, and Maria was his daughter really cool like went immediately to orthodox jewish like high school it's like i can't take this anymore it was a real the 70s were like real free to be me you and me and so what it was because i grew up around that kind of hippie ethos too which is like they kind of did this thing where it's like hey they're they are human beings. They're not kids. They have. They can make their own decisions. Right. They want to go to bed or They're they want to stay entities. out. But it's really it's like, I want to go in this room and get high. Yeah. And I don't want to fucking make an omelet. And I don't so, want to feel guilty about so it. So you're, yeah. you're, you're now an adult, right. even though you're 11, and go do whatever the fuck you want. 
that was kind of a 70s thing, but... Yeah, and there was a lot of experimentation with kind of like, not like clubs like Boys Rap or Automotive Mechanics, and girls would take that, and a little mm. bit of Home Ec. So they were trying to, you know, do outdated kind of gender <laughs> things, like punch a rug and that sort of, in poetry, rock poetry, but I think didn't really groom us for... So then you had to girls. basically bus yourself to Santa Monica? Yeah, it was an hour each way to Samo High. Yeah, because that's the nearest high school. Yeah. 45 minutes away. But still must have been kind of nice growing up in that Malibu environment as a young person. Well, I suppose so. But the palm trees and the puka shells uh, and yeah, those yeah. Miller Outpost shirts mm. and, and the girls had the Jordache jeans that yeah. lace and the Chemin de Fer jeans and the cork <laughs> wedgies. Gina, you're too young. I, you're but I'm too, loving that. The Chemin de Fer. It's a Chemin de Fer. And then they- I thought it was Chemin de Fer, but <laughs> maybe that's a North Hollywood take on it. It's good if you're Chad McQueen because oh. your dad's Steve McQueen. You got the puka shells, not the fake plastic right. ones from Zodi. <laughs> No, you have the Hawaiian, with real Hawaiian yeah, the Kona made ones. puka shells. Yeah. Your dad's the king of cool. Oh, You're uh, you got every mini bike and every go kart that yeah. that, that Skateboarding. exists. You got all the good yeah. stuff, and you got the right hair for mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, there was that important. fly away, that kind of partridge Feathered, family. Yes, sure. yes, yeah. very important to have Big. that. So you probably. Stood out a little bit then, and probably didn't, didn't mix in with the <laughs> no, Chad McQueen. The wrong, the wrong hair, and then I tried to get a perm. It's like the Asian oh, fro, the like perm. the Jackson. Oh, Asian eight, with a perm. Eight, oh, it's like God. the Jackson Five, the unknown <laughs> member of the Jackson Five. This is the fro. This bitch is horrible, Look, and I, the girndal horrible. I don't want to get myself into trouble, hair. but yeah. if you're a hairdresser and an Asian comes in and don't wants a perm, it. you have to just—it's a fiduciary yeah. thing. Like, like, step yeah. back. It's like a bartender. You've had enough. You've been oversurfed. Yeah, do no harm situation. But we wanted the Jane. See more ringlets, the mm-hmm. Battlestar Galactica, and nobody can get those anymore. Yeah. Anyway. But look at you. You, yeah. you landed on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, so then for you, is it Lee Marvin with Palimony, or am I thinking of another actor it is exactly the same? Lee Marvin. Lee. I looked up Palimony. There's an entry on Wikipedia, and there is a separate subsection for Marvin versus Marvin. Wow. It was like a notable case. Okay. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Out. Not that he would sue at this point, I would think, but still. Yeah, at least got to be gone. But He's, yeah, I guess he may have been one of the pioneers wow. of the palimony. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious to get uh, curious more about that. I don't know if she won. <laughs> I don't know how it worked. I feel like she would have to have won if that's why you know it. You know what I mean? Like it would have just been another guy that tried to get out of it and that was that. But certainly yeah. he, she'd have to sue him for palimony. We'd right. have to be in love with somebody coming up with the term palimony, palimony. which we <laughs> yeah. just love we now. not pals. <laughs> it's so much better than Benefer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened after that because I was 14 and didn't right. give a shit. <laughs> um, so uh, but where does the, the comedy and the commentary start? for you. So, and I went to Caltech and majored in physics, which I didn't know very much about because, you know, my father was from Shanghai and he was mm-hmm. Chinese. So then I went I, into liberal arts, which to a Chinese father is like pole dancing, as I like <laughs> to say. It's like, so um, I realized I was not very good at physics. I worked at Hughes Aircraft Company for a while and I am not a person that you want to to work on that, mm-hmm. let's just say. So I just started like coming up through clubs at that time. Um, so at my place was in Santa Monica and kind of doing doing that sort of thing. Public radio was coming in. This American Life was not even that kind of show yet. Mm-hmm. So it was a great time in the 90s for essayists and writers and commentators humorists. and stage, humorists, yeah. all that kind of thing. So I kind of went from there and then wrote books and theater and kind of went all back and forth. Was it always something you wanted to do and you feel like you got kind of pushed into the... Um, Hughes and in in more of the sort of technical yeah, side of I, life. Yeah, I knew I wanted to do something. And, and again, when you're raised like that with those kinds of parents, it's like, you know, go into aerospace engineering or you'll starve. And meanwhile, right. a few years later, the aircraft industry crashes in <laughs> Hughes. So, so it was definitely mm-hmm. that journey. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Chad McQueen is fair <laughs> as well as you. <laughs> I've, I've interviewed him before. He's race cars, though. He's, yeah, yeah, but it's always, I mean, here's another, you know, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> your, your dad is Mr. Car Guy mm-hmm. and he's Mr. Cool Guy. Mm-hmm. And really, no matter what you do, You'll you're still be. just that guy who's kind of 
fall, you know, it's like the people who didn't start the business, but they're, fin- they're right. they've inherited the business. Kind of rolls Maybe their they're eyes. doing a better job running the business, but they didn't start it. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of yeah. what are you talking about? Oh, it's my son <laughs> podcasting. Yeah, Steve McQueen died in 1980. By the way, he's died That's a long early. goddamn time ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is Allie McGraw still alive? Did she I die? think she's still alive. Oh, yeah. I would. I would. Uh, I would think. Is Lee, when did Lee Marvin die? <laughs> That's the real question. Probably killed himself uh, oh, when he's walking back to his car after he lost Sticky. his palimony. <laughs> Lee Marvin died in '87. Wow. Jeez. Age 63, and Allie McGraw's uh, 82. Wow. But Ben Vereen outlived them. He got hit Ben on... Vereen got run over yeah, on PCH. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But he, I think he lived. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's still alive. Yeah, he's 74. Stephen King nice. got ran over, too, didn't yeah. he? And Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman got ran over? Uh, yeah, in what? Florida, in like the villages or something. Like Not the villages per se, but like in you know, a retirement community. Oh, boy. Please look that up. <laughs> it's a pandemic. There's a lot of wikiing going on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, the bitches back, which uh, I was looking for clips so I could talk to you about them, but I couldn't find any. So I don't know if they're not on the internet or is there oh, a trailer well, for Well, this is the thing that's streaming. So mm-hmm. it's streaming on demand is the actual whole show. And so that was at the broad stage. It's like a cabaret format. And I served the audience drinks when we were going. So this is based on this book, The Mad Woman and the Vulva, that I wrote a few years ago. And my editor at The Atlantic kept saying, you should write about menopause. But I was in my 40s. I go, I don't want to write about it. No, 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 no. And then it came on. And then I started writing about it. So the menopause, which is such an unsexy thing, but. In topic, but it can start as early as in your 30s and last between four and 15 years. So oh. it's a really wide. It's fun for us. You need to have look forward to yeah. it. <laughs> fun, Thank you, Brian. Fun for everyone. Get your 30s. So I went on book tour with this book, The Mad Woman of the Volvo, but I found out like book tours are usually really boring, like they're in a bookstore and folding chairs and like whatever. And then I started getting invited to these house parties that these women were throwing. And these women, when they get 45 and up, they're crazy. So they'll be walking up in weird hats, carrying like a Johnny Walker, you know, the one with the handle on it. And so I go, I am scared because when they're menopause, they're screaming. They don't give a fuck anymore. In fact, that could be bleeped. Whatever. So they're going, oh my God. And I go, and, and they're drunk and eating cheese and, you know, just sweating. And I go, I don't want to go out. Like, I can't just read from my book. And so so just go out there. And so I just, in fear, just start doing, like, a couple riffs that they would enjoy and then get off in 15 minutes, so, you know, because it's kind of, what about those Costco samples? And who needs to get stoned to go to Michael's? And God, who wants to get on a scale? It was like this whole, you know, that sort of thing. And so that, that became the show. I had to do the show very last minute at the Broad. So I just put those rants together and then did that. So that's how that came out. It's a show of panic. Uh, Dr. (laughs) Drew talks about menopause as it uh, pertains to his wife, who didn't need to get any crazier, but evidently maybe did. (laughs) I didn't think it was possible. This one goes to 11, baby. But uh, I... uh, he said uh, testosterone, man, huge difference that a lot of women are suffering and getting into menopause. They don't really know what's going on. And testosterone makes a huge difference. Oh, balances out the estrogen? Yeah. Oh, or just okay. uh, testosterone therapy for oh. women going into menopause or in the throes of menopause. Are my balls going to shrink? Made a huge deal. <laughs> Big difference. Okay. Yeah. So. Because what happens, I mean, when people think of menopause, if they think of it at all and they try not to, um, it's, it's like their mother suddenly going crazy instead of drying those dishes just hurling them through the window and hurling a leg of lamb out of light glass of somebody su- suddenly snapping. But right. it turns out that the theory of menopause is that really the change is when you're 12 and you're a girl and you're just like any other boy, kind of selfish and you don't wash your hair and you smell bad and play with your horses and you don't care what... The- and then the estrogen cloud comes down and then you start worrying about boys and shampooing your hair and all the strawberry vanilla shampoo mm-hmm. starts mm-hmm. happening and you know, you're know you pleasing people. And then, so the estrogen has to kick in for those 30 years that you're making children and pregnant. And, and in fact, your memory gets repressed and your anger gets repressed because evolutionarily, it was not good for women to remember what the other tribe did and go attack them. They just want to take care of the children. So about 46, that cloud starts to lift. And then the women wake wow. up and go, why the hell am I waking, making sandwiches for you guys? You know, you're seven feet tall. And they start hurling the sandwiches. So it's thought of as a return back to yourself, which is the idea of the bitch is back. Mm. I love right. that. Bitch is there. It's coming back to your own. And the testosterone, they're all elevated levels of testosterone in women's levels when they're menopausal and that 
they grow mustaches and they get angry. Actually, you do kind of grow a lot of hair in different places. So. That's yeah. all bullshit. <laughs> That's the fun. <laughs> I don't know oh, how. I don't know the science behind it, but I've <laughs> talked to Dr. Drew about this more than once, and somehow testosterone is a yeah, is they a good do thing. do that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, you know, you, I've been a fan for so long. I'm so happy you're here. And the, I, I was even talking about how the low life, your segment on on the radio, really kind of in, defined my driving time in L.A. for so many years. And you're very open, and you do it in this really humorous way. Um, but I know you have two daughters. Yes. How do they? How have they sort of felt growing up with a mom that is so? open about your life, about their life, about uh, divorcing, about stuff about the kids? Well, I think when they were growing up, they just didn't know and they weren't didn't really follow it very much. And then although in middle school, because I did blow up my marriage, speaking of road trips in Las Vegas, I did, <laughs> took an RV and went to Burning Man, blew up my marriage about age 46. And it was horrible. And my oldest daughter was in middle school. So, it, you know, kind of in Millican Middle School, they would mm. Google their parents and would come up at Sandra and mm. affair and divorce. I mean, it was pretty, pretty bad. Millican's uh, in the San Fernando Valley. It is. It's in Studio City. So yeah. a lot of people go in the in the beautiful valley because mm. I ended up in Van Nuys. Thank you. Ooh. After Malibu to Van Nuys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know what that, that joke. What's the quickest way to get to the valley? Marry a musician. That, that was it. So man, there we were. So um, there's so that Van Nuys, and then there's Sherman Oaks yeah. adjacent. Yeah, Are yeah, you no, in or Van, Nuys? Van, Van, or not like Valley Glen, Valley Glen oh. or Toluca Heights. Yeah. You know yeah. that don't have those kinds. Yeah. Of, Van Nuys is rough. Yeah, it's, as you uh, say, out of the hot tub and into the snowbank. Yes, yeah. no. or we'd say Van Nuys is a very good place to buy tile. Yes. You yes. know, there's so much good <laughs> tile. Yeah, like tech, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you want to buy tile there. So, yeah, so that, that was kind of pretty hard. And now they just ignore it. They first, like, it's the family business making donuts. They don't really That's pay great. much attention to it. So, you know, and they're on. how old are they? So they are um, 19 and 20. One just graduated UC Santa Barbara, and Ooh. the other is at Berkeley. And, the, and they are a trans, so they're now a they. They're God both. Bless. Are they both they? The, no, the older one is a she, and the younger one is a they. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Why, <laughs> why is this old, math hard but for But the you? older one is a she through yeah. and through. I mean, from soup to nuts. Started as a part of the nuts. You got to rephrase oh that. I'm not, it's going to get offensive, but I'm just trying to get oh clarity my God. here. Soup to, okay, soup to nuts. <laughs> soup to uh, no nuts. No, no, no. Soup to no nuts. Yeah, I don't know what kind of... Yeah, okay, I, I can't even go there. Yeah. It's, it's I not worth just, it. Okay, soup to nuts. And then... And then uh, Your younger one. It is... Si- Let's see, soup, soup, and then what you know, were nuts, their nuts names? Presenting. Let's <laughs> nuts <laughs> presenting. Let's figure this but out. No, not, okay. So Madeline is the old, like these so, older ones. The older ones. Okay. So yeah, and we still call her Madeline. Madeline. All right. Okay, Madeline. And I'm then clear. the youngest, Sing. Uh-huh. Sing. Non uh-huh. Non-binary. Right. Oh, okay. So. Graduated uh, in at age twenty. Yeah, from, uh, yeah. In, in art, what could go wrong? Gout show. Uh, <laughs> a gout show. Exactly. They just had your graduation this week. Oprah that's, speaking. That's, oh that's my! Really, well, Oprah just had to walk down the hill. I know. She took her golf cart I... like down the hill. And... <laughs> yeah. The yeah. backyard. Um, yeah. She, she's a good student then, right? I yeah. Mean, or she started 16? She or is a how's good that student work? and blew out of there. They had a lot of AP credits, blew through, you know, graduating into what's next. I go into those, uh, the adventure starts now, balloons at the Ralphs. And then mm-hmm. behind me in line, a woman said, what adventure? I go, I don't know. <laughs> hey, let me ask about the uh, literally maybe the bloom coming off the rose a little bit. But <laughs> when I was young if in fact you were to present a young woman, like when I was like 23, if you bought a woman a, a bouquet of roses, you had to go to the Toluca Lake the florist. florist. It was, you know, 99 oh, bucks. It was d- disgusting mm-hmm. discussions of Conroy's, baby breath yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. Now there's the Guatemalan chick who's out front of the Circle K. Yeah. She's got a pretty nice bouquet nice going selection. for 14, 17 yeah. bucks. Yeah. And then you go to the Ralph's and they got all the Mylar mm-hmm. balloons the and the section. full floral. Yeah. So, it doesn't that take a little off it for the ladies? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I because see what it's kind of, it always seemed to be effort based right. for me yes. like if uh, i said i got my girlfriend tori amos's flowers tori, tori amos didn't want them she left them behind yeah. at the studio i presented them girlfriend not pleased because these were sloppy flower seconds from tori amos versus 
Tru- versus the pain it is right. for a guy to spend 89 bucks yeah. at the Toluca Lake Choose Florist. Choose the yeah. right floor of the right. right. So I'm just saying, guy coming home with flowers is cool, but the guy going, I was just buying a six pack and the Guatemalan chick caught me at the mm-hmm. car when I was walking back out to the truck mm-hmm. and then I just gave her 20 bucks and here you go, sweetheart. Yeah. Like I wouldn't couch it that way, but what I'm saying is, is same thing or is no, a lot no, less no. effort we, we grew involved? Up in two two different like places. Same. I'm I'm like 59, so I, in the set like I went to college in 79 to 83, mm-hmm. where it's kind of in that wave of sexual liberation. So now instead of the guy coming in the car and giving you the flowers and paying for dinner, it's like you have to go Dutch at the local macrobiotic restaurant. Mm-hmm. There are no flowers, and you have to sleep with them on the first date because otherwise they're frigid. And we had diaphragms, Gina. This is before your time. <laughs> I was going to say so far. Check, plastic check, cup check. that you dusted with corn right. in the morning you had to lend him 20 bucks for his poetry and take his his sheaf of flyers to put up in the oh so there were God, no flowers even, even the it's a, three dollar 99 carnations would have been good so I, where i grew up <laughs> malibu valley pasadena there was nothing was it true did you get flowers did no you? no and and i think the i i hear you and i think this is what, as a female, and Sandra, please let me know if you feel the same way. It's no, I would have treated you better. Go ahead. It's no longer about the flowers. It's about how they're wrapped. Because mm-hmm. you can tell if they're from a nice place, from like, a, you know, a beautiful, like, butcher oh paper God. with twine and like a little twine. succulent, as opposed to like a crinkly plastic with a sticker on it. You know, the mm-hmm. barcode. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just if you get the, the ones by Forest Lawn, pop off that plastic wrapping and, you know, wrap a little twine around it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. really smart. Like Thank you. Yeah. Or brown paper. Good. Yeah. yeah, that's smart. So you never got flowers. So. Yeah. Oh no, never. No, we always had to lend them money, and then they would cry about their fathers. It's not a fun time to. <laughs> and the maleness. That's like the the man show. Your important American contribution to the media landscape. It's Thank like you. they were not even. They would whine, and we had to pay for them, and yeah. it was just. I think I, I think the moral of the story is both sexes, both directions. We were always kind of asking to meet in the middle, but I don't know. Do we really want mm. that? I, I think, I you know, when, uh, you know, I don't want it's all fucked out, but when you're laying in bed and you hear the window break at night, you don't want to just look at each other in bed with your yeah. man and no. go, who's well, going like, down? Like you wrote for what it. What the fucking guy did? <laughs> Yeah, the guy would pick up a pool cue and right. go, I'll take care of this. Lock the door behind me or whatever. And that's the thing. In our house, everyone does the dishes. Everyone folds the laundry. But I saw a cockroach two nights ago that yeah. you could have put a saddle on. I freaked out. <laughs> I screamed. I got on the bed. And I don't know what Andy's feelings are about cockroaches. And I don't want to know. I just want him to take care of it. If he's scared, yeah. like he'll keep it to himself. Mm. I, yeah. I won't be Stoic. doing that. Yeah. Does he have Good. a baseball bat? Some do the baseball yeah. bat. Yeah. But yeah. By the bed. Sure. Yeah, they should have that. Thank yeah. God, taking care of insects is considered manly because that's the one manly thing I do on the home. I don't. Care of that. Well, also, any yeah. plumbing issues, any leaks, oh, yeah, anything. That's, that that's, that's oh, look yeah. at you. That's all. I'm manlier than I look. Big man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, gra- I grabbed uh, Daddy Long Legs by the leg because the girls are freaking out. My wife, and my daughter, my four year old daughter. I'm like, <laughs> look, look, look at uh, it. Oh, she freaked out. She hated it so much. Yeah. You got an auger? You got a snake? You got a snake that toilet? I guess no, no, I have installed a flushing mechanism, though. Oh, yeah. ball cock. Ball cock. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Sweet. my God. Not so much with the smart boards on refrigerators and so you don't have to do that no of course not no 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 actual you leave that knowledge. to the expert Thank you, board. Yeah. yeah so uh the show let's get back to the show sorry the bitch is uh, back uh hour 90 what what's hour our 20, oh no 70 minutes oh that's good 70 yeah straight through no intermission and it's like my journey uh through menopause and then we say we're gonna bar the doors because you can't <laughs> leave um but it is like just talking about melting down in the middle of a woman's life and it, it's interesting because i was driving in the valley when this happened and i go at the intersection of like uh you know roscoe and sherman way and then a man said later there is no intersection of they roscoe run and the sherman same way. direction and i go huh. there was that day <laughs> you know so that's <laughs> how i remember it um, uh, it can be so many things happen while driving. And it's kind of it was like this meltdown moment about age 46 where I'm like driving, going, I need to get the good pizza for my kids and listening to the radio on my Starbucks venti latte with four splendors or whatever. And then suddenly I realized that I just couldn't handle it. It's like, I want to die. I don't want to live. And, and so that big hormonal change like triggered this whole show. So it's interesting. Like women have so many different um, symptoms when they're menopausal, you know, kind of bloated, angry, fat, forgetful. You know, they can't sleep. I'm going through handle. menopause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and some women haven't slept through the f- night for years and right. years and years. And that sometimes in the middle of the afternoon, this seemed, you know, uh, generic to men and women. It's like sometimes the only thing that holds you together is like 
this Costco samples. But actually, I'll go to the audience and go, which store gives the best samples? On three. And I'll go one. And if you go, Costco. Occasionally, someone will go, Bristol Farms. It's like you're in the expensive seats. It's like, no, <laughs> Costco. And that, that's what we miss is kind of like Costco. You could get the four stages of Costco by the massage chair and the jewelry cabinet. You could really get a full meal back in the day, which we don't have now. Well, really, as I think about it, I don't, I don't, Spent a lot of time at the Costco, but Jimmy Kimmel does. <laughs> He's made the cover of the magazine oh multiple times. Oh, la la. Oh, multiple times. Chris no could way. show you. I think no he's way. made the cover of, you know, Kirkland. He's uh, a gazette right. or oh, whatever it is. Uh, you know. <laughs> Kirkland <laughs> Kirkland I have a Kirkland, Kirkland swimsuit. Courier. It's well, very nice. Is that better than the it. Trader Joe's flyer? Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's made the cover. He's, he's made the cover. Okay. The point is. Oh, my the, God. And I used to go to Costco Jesus. with him and uh, out here in like Van Nuys or Burbank or whatever. There's but one Sherman Oaks. All the here's ones. the beauty. The yeah. beauty I've now realized of the samples. So I never really thought about the crazy allure of the samples. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not about money because the shit they're selling, yeah. it, it's really, it's not a price issue per se for, you yeah. know, folks and uh, adults in our bracket. It's they're selling quiche. It's eight. It's, doable. it's eight dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'm getting yeah. free. <laughs> I'm getting a nickel's worth of free quiche. Right. It's not that. It's the guilt in the eating of what you're eating because this is manslaughter, not murder one. You buy the quiche, you bring it home and you bake it. That's on you. Right. That's murder one. That is a big diet faux pas. You're walking past Smart. the quiche. That is the difference between you rolling someone and you finding a wallet. Right. And the people that the reason you love Costco so much is because it's like, well, it's not, you know, on my diet, but on the other no. hand, I didn't plan this. Just so buy, I'm not yeah. getting this is like it's like you're sober and someone spiked your Pepsi yeah. or you know your Fresca or yeah. something. Like, I didn't do this. You know what that's yeah. called? Done to me. That's called a free lapse in free the lapse, program. Right. This is a free lapse at Costco. So you can eat yeah. as much fattening, junky stuff mm -hmm. as you want. Yeah. It's not Sausage. on you. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. count against you yeah. or your diet. And yeah. they come in such small pieces they that do. you can eat 14 of them <laughs> right. guilt-free. And right. I think that's the real allure that's to smart. it. Right. And you go, I'm taking one for my kids. Yeah. And right. They, right. Nowhere. Or in Arizona they're... living with their stepmom. <laughs> and then you always have to, because you feel guilty, especially after the second or third, you take the item and then you just go put it like behind the tires. Oh. You don't really buy <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, the only place with better samples, the farmer's market. Oh, yeah. Not because more. Costco which? has many oh. farmer's markets. Yeah. Really? Because like at Costco, they have four or five or six stations. Right. Every single tent has a, a sample at the That's farmer's true. market. That's true. But much more compelled to much buy. Much more pressure, yes. Well, you're standing that's right the in the lesbian front of them. couple right. and yeah. the Subaru broke the down on the way that's there, right. and this yeah. is kind of their living. You yeah. know, you can't eat four pieces point. of no. their cheese and keep walking, no. right? Please don't. We'll yeah. come back. We're on yeah. our way out. Yeah. How? What's your batting average on buying samples? Mine's pretty good. Mm. I've, I, the only thing I'm comparing it to is I went to the Ralphs. They had some like smoked cheese. I tasted it. And I went, oh, that's good. I'll. I'll buy one. Pumpkin what? ravioli. I'm oh, sorry. Ooh, yes, ooh. that's a good one. That sounds good. Yeah. Pretty good, because I only sample <coughs> things that I think I'm going to like. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm more prone to buy them anyway. Like, I'm not going to sample something like I have no interest. Mm. What can't pumpkin do, really? It does a pie. It <laughs> does a ravioli. <laughs> ravioli. But, you know, the worst it does samples. a latte. The worst? Mm. Trader Joe's. Uh, mm. Obviously, the buckwheat pasta, the unfiltered yeah, apple juice. Yeah, you don't want any of that shit. Exactly. Too small. Yeah. Also. Yeah. A lot of stuff on like a rye crisp. Exactly. We didn't ask for that. No. No. Maybe it's the age of the person uh, dispatching the, the samples. Too. Mm. Trader Joe's, they skew young. They yeah. Don't, they don't and they're always in the back corner. I like the sort of last stop before the grave. <laughs> Things didn't work out. The hair and net. Yeah, just yeah. to get out of the house. I don't want to be. I'm not heading up. I'm heading down. <laughs> this this is where I'm going. I, I kind of like, like that. that yeah. I want a little defeat in the eyes. <laughs> A little, and I also kind of like the take two, take five, take right. the fucking yeah. skillet. I don't give yeah. a fuck. Right. Like, yeah. I'm, just, I'm here. I'm going to die. I'm getting Tuesday. paid either way. Yeah. 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 I like yeah. that. Smart. Yeah. All right. So Trader Joe's, not good. <laughs> yeah. Costco, good. 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 Very good. And good. then uh, what was it? Bristol Farms. Bristol Farms. That kind of thing. That's amazing. And then somebody, any yeah. farmer's market good, any but farmer's the pressure's market. on. You know yeah. I mean? Good yeah. luck looking at that person in the eye and being like, oh, you dedicated your life to this cheese. I'm out of here. Mm. So it's an interesting time that we're living in, in that we sort of simultaneously have this birth of farmers markets 
and people shopping for you and bringing food oh, yeah. to your groceries to right. your house, which is the this is the yeah. two yeah. extremes of providing for yourself, yeah. right? But for some, and see, I always have this theory, which is um, I always kind of say. Well, the more safe spaces we create, the more octagons we're going to have. And the more <laughs> Priuses that drive around, the more Jeeps with lift kits we're going to see. Like, It'll things always give find way. its middle. So right. the more people ordering groceries online, that will give way to more farmer's markets because yeah. it's like it's a we always have to push back against this thing. Mm. And you know who's going to save us all? People like me who I know for a fact I am not good enough for Instacart. I'm not good enough to spend that, to earmark that money that I work for (laughs) and give it to someone else like some French queen and (laughs) wait around binging TV, having someone bring it to me. Yeah. 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 People like me, we will. And you're always going to be disappointed. Like, oh, you call us an avocado. That's right. I wish I was there. (laughs) Well, then go the fuck there. (laughs) That's right. Put your fucking sweatpants on, you lazy sack, and go fucking shop like a human being then. I didn't want sugar cured ham. Yeah. Yeah. I would never. I did Instacart exclusively during uh, uh, COVID. I was very sick. And I couldn't go to the grocery store. And uh, yes, there was so many times where I was like, the fuck? This is an apple thing fucking fruit. Did they ever call or text you? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. Through, I mean, at least the they're, yeah. yeah. Can't find this. What about this? Right. Like, no, I asked for this. <laughs> I got, I did it and I got, uh, I got I got an extra bag of shit that wasn't mine. Oh, we did too. Then I got angry at the person. Like, what kind of toothpaste you're using? <laughs> like, it's my toothpaste now. Why didn't you get Tom's of Maine? Like, you should have known. <laughs> and of course, Chris, I had toothpaste and deodorant in it, but it was both shit I yeah, didn't use. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. This yeah. is an attack. What's wrong with you? you? If the bag's undeliverable, they have to do something with it. So if someone offered us a bag, too, like, this bag's undeliverable. Do you want it? And we're like, sure. And like, we actually had the thought. We're like, do we want someone else's romaine lettuce? It's like, well, it was in the store Why 10 not? minutes ago. Why not? Uh, yeah, I got. I had this happen once when I ordered <laughs> Thai food, and they brought over the wrong Thai food. And my thing was, well, as long as they ordered shit I would have liked anyway, <laughs> I'm definitely going to eat it. Absolutely. And I opened it up, and it was the first one was beef salad, like cold beef salad. <laughs> I was like, never even heard of that. Order oh, this, and I was immediately angry at the person you who ordered cold beef never salad. Never heard of beef salad. Oh, it's it's here. It's there, okay. let me believe you me. <laughs> okay, I'll people have eat to. beef salad. I no. I don't get the. Like, it was it larb. It's <sighs> it's it's sliced up cold beef yeah. it, amongst lettuce and whatever. Well, it's if, a thing. If you're okay. on Atkins, which unfortunately I am because of the COVID-19, Most of us are. the pandemic, yeah, it's like, whatever. that's exactly what we would eat, a beef sadly. Salad. A beef salad. But it feels like, to me, I want savory with my beef, and yeah. the cold beef removes the savory that part of awful. it. All right. Well, you're going to hang around, Sandra, and do uh, the news with yes, us? I... All right. Why don't we do that? We'll take a Quick break. We'll come back and do the news. Great. And then I have gifts for you. Oh, you have gifts. Okay. Do the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff face on TMZ. Joe Biden. Come on out. Meet news with Gina Gino Grad. News with Gina Grad. Well, first, before we get into it, let's do the breaking news that there are gifts for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, here. Gifts for you. Okay, these are post pandemic gifts as I move conveniently away from the mic. Okay. So here it is. My and, goodness. Uh-huh. So you're each getting this in your own COVID <gasps> safe curbside pickup oh. bag. Because wow. in my, my book came out like last year's, I did COVID safe signings in my fucking driveway so you're getting mm-hmm. this that so is in amazing. this bag is your this is actually for adam so perfect this is your mad woman the volvo wine glass oh. except that i've i've augmented it to have the mangria oh, oh thank so you on the back, there's a lower level that, that is dr oz recommends <laughs> and then weight watchers three points sure and then up here is mad woman but way above that is the mangria oh, you're gonna oh, get thank so you. So that's your, Do you send that to a professional calligrapher or an engraver yeah i know isn't it amazing, it is amazing. and don't you might want to wash it because i yeah my he doesn't he doesn't awesome. care okay. he's never washed anything. and then here is a tape together <laughs> just here some these are going away but these are the quarantini cocktail recipes oh, that's, that's oh, great. where you, you just 
pour shit together. Now like I, I want to say I want to compliment your glass because I'm yeah. having a flashback. So it's it's a it's a glass. It's, yeah. it's kind of a tumbler. Yeah. It's stemless. like yeah. stemless, yeah. stemless, stemless unbreakable. This is about seven eight ounces. Yeah. And it's got the lines on it. The low line is the Doctor Oz right. recommends. Yeah. We talked about just a little splash of wine or scotch or whatever. Above that's the Weight Watchers and then the uh, Mad Woman. Of course, near the top, because I'm having a flashback when I was young and we were living in our first apartment. We had a shot glass, and at the bottom, there was a line about a half inch from the bottom of the shot glass said hog, and then one up about an inch and a half and said man. <laughs> and so we would have to pour ourselves shots, and nobody wanted the hog right. pour. We wanted the, the man pour. But I've not seen a glass That's good graduated there you that have way. It. Now you have it. Now each Sorry. of you have, and you get a glass, and you get, and in Thank there, there's you. a lighter. So it's nice. a doc. Mr. Lowe's not afraid to be ma- naked. It's a Malibu thing <laughs> of a lighter, if you look at it. Mm-hmm. It's my dad. Um, Naked. He was known as the naked man of Malibu, so he would do handstands naked in Malibu as Ali McGraw was speeding by. He would steal women's speedos out of the dumpster and hitchhike what? on Pacific Coast Highway. Did not get beat like Ben Vereen did not get hit, but et cetera. So you have that lighter. No, it I want to talk in there. about your dad. Okay. <laughs> so you see that light? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, let me it. say this in okay. defense of your dad. No one yeah. wants to see their parent doing a nude Headstand not, or no, handstand. not that much. But a diminutive Asian man is about the best place you're going to land for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like Hus- has to husky be done. Armenian guy. <laughs> that's much yeah. more damaging. Big well, psyche, big picture. Yeah, long but term. my father is in women's speedo. And for motorists, the bottom part. Yeah, wow. that's a little upsetting. So now, okay, in the pandemic, it's kind of like so. Women of a certain age, like after the age of fifty, G and I have many years ago. God instead of becoming you. fatter, we mm-hmm. become more goddess-like. Oh, so in the pandemic, uh, there have been you know elastic waist stretch pants. They're yes. not fat pants, but I'm calling them goddess pants. I'm mm-hmm. wearing some. They're great. That's great. Love, right? love yeah. them. That's no, nice. So you each are getting a pair. All right. Okay, and you can pick your own color. <laughs> See, oh. I came with I'm so totally here. More you excited can, about this than I should be. You can get the women's colors are midnight purple, uh-huh. emerald green, uh-huh. turquoise isles. Oh. See, that's kind oh. of like, oh. Mm-hmm. And then Rocky Horror Magenta for oh, the, the hit Adam girls. And then Firefly Red. That's amazing. Or you can get the man's colors, which are uh, purple haze, oh, <laughs> uh, electric moss. Yep. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, like I like the the Aquaman. Yep. Ooh, or good. the Iceman cometh. Well, right? I'm a summer, uh, so these yeah. are these are Hef. Yeah. The Hef. The oh. Hef. And these are the dragon. That's right. I'll go with the dragon. Okay. okay so you're getting the dragon, Gina. You're gonna take the. I mean, I love a good pink pant. Okay. So you're going with the uh, Rocky or Magenta and Brian. Oh my gosh, I got all you're those. You're very He's comfortable with no, no, you get one. You're no, comfortable with your masculinity. Uh, green or blue, either one. Okay, so you're emerald green. Yeah, green. Or this is fantastic. electric moss to oh, match. Nice. Okay, Thank you. there you go. You've been swagged. I Thank love you. Okay, this is amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I want to put these on right now. Speaking yeah. of breaking yeah. news, Gene Hackman was struck by a car in the Florida Keys in 2012. Wow, that is breaking. Oh, wow. yeah. Thank you. So, just mm. so uh, thank, thank you, you so Sandra. much. My pleasure. Um, let's do a little update on the guy who slapped Macron. Uh, by the way, yeah. uh, Sandra, I've, I've just come out with a candle. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a candle good. that smells like my balls. Oh, can and I have that? I'd like to present it. Oh, because I want to smell your balls. Not bad. Oh, because remember when when Paltrow had the smells like my vagina? Yeah. Well, now. Yeah. It's nice. Soapy balls. Yeah, Yeah. soapy balls. Nice. It's a stage vanilla. It's a quality candle as well. (laughs) It'll burn long and bright for you. Oh. Yep. By the way, available at AdamCurl.com for Father's Day. Uh, so the guy who slapped Macron, he is uh, he has been charged. Oh, let's he, use yeah. your dad's naked likeness to light oh, my that's balls a great candle. Yeah. Think, that would I be think, so special. I think this has come oh, full circle. Oh my nice god, ambience. his balls and oh, this is beautiful. <clears throat> and he died at age un- seven. Old balls. This is a unity candle now. Oh my oh, god. I- feel like we should dedicate an entire episode to your father. Yeah. Well, there's the color. Yeah. That's color lovely. Yeah. Put it out. Turn the oh, and he really dumpster good. dove in Malibu. Expired sushi. You guys could have hung. Yeah. Expired sushi. Expired sushi. Gently. Not long. Right. But Gently. somewhat. And Starbucks. Pull the Starbucks together of other people's things at the Malibu. Um, 
Starbucks. Wow. Back to you, Gina. I'm sorry. I want to know more my about My father your dad. is overtaking as usual. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I mean, let's do this if we have to. Yeah. So the man who was caught on video slapping Emmanuel Macron across the face earlier this week has been handed a four-month prison sentence. Uh, in an emergency trial, 28-year-old Damien Terrell was found guilty of violence against a person invested with public authority following the incident. Macron was uh, conducting this meet and greet with uh, members of this the, of the public, and Terrell kind of smacked him in the face. Why did he do it? Joel told the court, when I saw his friendly, lying look, I felt disgust and I had a violent reaction. Oh, it was inspired. It was an impulsive reaction. I was surprised by myself. Now, apparently, there was a group of friends considering bringing an egg or cream pie to throw at to throw at the president, but he didn't, and so he just smacked We him. haven't seen the cream pie guy in a yeah. while. Remember that was a thing for a little while? It was a thing on, like, sitcoms. Was it no, real? No, there was somebody was yeah, doing was it to people. dignitaries. Yeah. We have a That'd weird thing. We I have a thing with call. like pit bulls attack for like seven months and then they lay off yeah. for 20 years. Hear about it. There's freeway shootings that work for like three weeks and then they yeah. go away for 20 yeah. years. Like the, Oh, the they're cream, back. Oh, they're back. Right. The cream pie in the face. Mm-hmm. Like I think they, Zuckerberg got pied. Maybe it was it was it was like famous rich people. Got yeah, pied. people people were getting getting Bezos, pied. Maybe? Yeah. yeah, we should mm-hmm. bring that back. Yeah. Get comfortable, please. Yeah, I'm oh, trying yeah. to. You know, and yeah, now that now just... that Trump is, is gone, it's great that Canada is scandalous again. Right, hey, Canada is scandalous. Yeah. Um, so Whoa. remember <laughs> again, it can't be. It's Thank it's you. not just you. These that, chairs are spring loaded. That is like a pie <laughs> in the face thing. So remember how we kind of said it's a slippery slope with the vaccine cards and, you know, there's ways around that. Well, guess what? The new problem is that uh, so Fox News reports that a Nevada man was charged Wednesday with stealing hundreds of blank COVID-19 vaccine cards from a Southern California vaccination center. Mohammed Ralph Ahmed of Vegas allegedly took more than 500 cards from the Pomona Fairplex. The former L.A. city contract worker was charged with one felony count of grand theft and he scheduled to be arraigned uh, in L.A. County in August. The case remains under investigation, but okay, so you just steal blank cards. Okay, now you're vaccinated. I I just, well, it feels like a target of opportunity, like someone Mm. left it out and he was just walking by, but But if we can steal... No, I would not, but, you know, a few, there was several years ago, not too many, when the price of copper got really expensive, Mm -hmm. And people were stealing copper wire, like going outside at night and pulling, pulling conduit it. apart, like pulling it. At that point, I realized, oh, we can do anything. We're, we're stealing wire. Right, right. You know what I mean? What uh, purses, vaccine cards, right. what's not on the table right. when we're pulling wiring out of conduit, like an, out in the street at night? You yeah, know? yeah. So I think, I think we're capable of anything. I think you're right. It smells so good in here. It does smell good. <laughs> um, we have a little follow-up to the Lilibet scandal. Oh, God. So Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are threatening the BBC after the network reported that the former royals didn't ask the Queen's blessing to name their infant Lilibet. We talked about that. According to the BBC, a Buckingham Palace source claims Queen Elizabeth was never asked about it. Now, according to the Daily Beast, Harry and Meghan's legal team has issued a rare legal warning to the papers ad- advising them not to repeat the allegation that the couple had named their second child after Queen By Elizabeth. By the way, as far as the, your, yeah. the legal team you want to be on, yeah, that's, that's the, the legal one. team, yeah. not the Project Innocence now <laughs> working in the Dade County area. You know what I mean? That's that's a full-blown bummer for yeah. attorneys. You know what I mean? You want to be on the Royals yeah. legal. Sweet, sweet the Queen name. didn't give her permission to use her nickname as a first name. Right. Was that wig really powdered or just a wig? <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. You call that a curtsy? I'll sue your ass. That's the team to be on. Yes. Food's excellent. Travel's great. Yeah. Plenty of perks. You yes. know, you stay in the East Wing of Buckingham Palace. We'll get. We'll have you on retainer. You know. You know. Yeah. That's a sweet, sweet a lawyer gig. gig you're right, right there. Oh, and by the way, I sent this story to Brian earlier. You know who's on team? Uh, uh, who's the other one? William. Well, the other it, yeah, anti Harry. Anti Harry is uh, is it Noel? Noel Gallagher. <laughs> Brian, I sent it to you. What did the it say? headline was something to the effect of Noel Gallagher calls Harry a, a, a entitled snowflake or something. Because he's like, I know what it's like when a brother gets in the middle of family business and starts <laughs> blowing up your shit all over the place and fuck that guy. And so yeah, apparently yeah. Noel and Liam's bad blood is still raging. Oh. Oh. So days. now oh. th- this was the controversy about Lilibet or whatever. Yeah. That was the queen's nickname. Right. She didn't give permission. She couldn't say Is that Elizabeth. an homage to her? Yeah, you'd think so. 
But if it's like a, I mean, but if it was a private joke in the family and the queen is supposed to be the most, what, dignified human on the planet, maybe she's not uh, down. Mm. So, you know? but the, 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 the kerfuffle is they should have asked. I is that guess. what they're saying? I mean, how long are they going to keep these MFers in the news? It's unbelievable. It's a great yeah. question. <laughs> These are are headlines. These are headlines. I don't know. I I, I agree. But I think we like it because our news is like the six-year-old was shot in the back through the the baby seat in Pomona on her way to preschool. And then we got, did she use her fake name or not? You know, It's uh, a much needed and welcome distraction. Yes. All right. Speaking of which, David Hasselhoff uh, recently appeared in a video encouraging Germans to get vaccinated. Speaking of royalty. And I have two clips. These are uh, both (gasps) going to be double-barrel goodness. The PSA was released on Monday and includes the 68-year-old Baywatch alum showing off his band-aid and giving a little speech here's his little video to the germans action air metal oh that's right i david hasselhoff am supposedly a hero because of baywatch and knight rider and the berlin wall but i found freedom with vaccination you can too what is he talking about you ask well i did a little digging he did a concert like Moments before the Berlin Wall fell? I'm going to give a preemptive you're welcome for finding unearthing this uh, uh, video. So he did this giant German festival concert, and his performance was a song called Looking for Freedom, while being suspended above the Berlin Wall yeah. on New Year's Eve in 1989. Oh. Here's a clip of that concert. for it, It's like dessert. It's a, it's a palate cleanser. One more. Look at that jacket. Look, check out the chaser lights on that jacket. He's just warming up. It kicks. It kicks in. Ah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I'm starting to. I'm starting to look for my exit country. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he has it. And, it, it, and also, but I've, kind of, I've kind of realized you know, we talked about Seagal and Russia, yeah, yeah. and we got uh, Dennis Rodman in North, in Korea. North Korea. I'm sort of look. I'm getting to that point in my career where I'm looking for an exit country, yeah. and no one ever checks up. You know, I just go, oh, I'm huge in Croatia. That's right. I'm right. fucking huge. They fucking love me. No one goes, well, let me go there. Yeah. Let me investigate right. this. They just go, huh, Corolla's huge in Croatia. So. Big in Croatia. Where is he? He's in Croatia. Yeah. That's I, got, fucking I got huge. a nominee for you. Hmm. Hungary. Hungary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any, who's the most famous Hungarian? No one knows. Nobody Second, knows. Second, the food. Mm. Yeah, mm. he loves Hungarian. I mean, I'm not going to be able to knock off the Gabor sisters, but, <laughs> but I will. I will podium yep. over there in well, Hungary. But Croatia is. I know the food. Croatia is supposed to be the new honeymoon destination spot. Is oh, is it? Beautiful. All right, then I'll go. I'll go to Budapest. Yeah, and I'll explain mm. that I'm huge, and then no one will be able to verify you have to call it. it Budapest. Budapest. But, you know, Hasselhoff, he's unkillable. Mm-hmm. It's like yes. he was in Baywatch, he was already old. He was yeah. like 50. <laughs> yeah. And yes. he knew to surround himself with young people and their rubber. Yeah, so it's, he's amazing. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Oh, he's, he's a survivor. Totally he knows what he's doing. No yeah. kid yourself. He's a pro. Yeah. He's a pro. <laughs> you know what? But he also wanted to do Rocky Horror in Fishnets and Heels. So, you know, that might be the next move, like the whole. He did? Yes. Oh, he's always. You I made, interviewed made, him for Buzz Magazine a long time ago. He made a Caitlyn Jenner face. Yeah. Ah, could that uh, watch for that? that. Face. Watch for that. Mm. Okay. I never thought about that. Think about it. I would, I would about, fall in love with him all over again. It's time. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of this, uh, speaking of things I have fallen in love with, Jessica Chastain is making a new movie oh, yeah. that has everybody buzzing, and by everybody, I mean me. Uh, <laughs> Tammy Faye Baker. In the upcoming movie, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, it's due in theaters September 17th, just in time for the launch of award season. The movie features Oscar no- the no- Oscar-nominated actress as the former televangelist and TV personality, Tammy Faye Baker, directed by Michael Showalter of The mm. State. Mm. Um, and also, um, there's a doc, which I highly recommend, of the same name, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. You've seen it? Yeah, yeah. Sundance, many years And ago. guess who is playing Jim Baker? Hmm. Andrew Garfield mm, the oh, from Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, and it kind of works. I'll show you. Here's a side-by-side <sighs> of the original, the real Jim and Tammy Faye. And wow. Yeah, look at that. Which is good. Exactly. Oh, eyes. 
And look yeah. at what, like her jaw and everything. That's so, Chastain on the left. That's Chastain. Wow, mm. that's some heavy makeup. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, lo- and prosthetics yeah, you can kind of tell around the I mean, jaw. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so Jeez. that is going to, uh, uh, that'll be in theaters in September. Showalter did The Big Sick. He directed The Big Sick. He did? Which, yeah, which oh, is like really, really good. Yeah. Oh, he directed movie. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, you know, after the whole behind the candelabra thing, mm-hmm. you can never say no to anything That's right. that you hear about in advance <laughs> because of what? No, Matt Dame, get the fuck out of it. Oh, it's, uh, it's my favorite film of the year. Yeah. So, it's amazing. Michael with, Douglas. With that in mind, you can't say no in you're, advance to any idea yep. for any film yep. ever or the casting of it. Yep, you're the absolutely Tanya Hardy right. movie was fantastic. That's you, right. You can't say yeah. no. This kind, just the trailer alone, it's funny that you said that because this kind of has that feel a little mm. bit, a little... A little winky, a little, you know, a little tongue in cheek. You kind of have to, though, with this subject matter. You know, yeah. You can't play it serious. Yeah. So very excited about that. Are you familiar? I'm sure, Sandra, you're you're very, you know things. Uh, for the rest of you, are you familiar with Ambergris? Do you know what that is? Amber. Whales. I love her. She was great in yeah. Whale stuff. Mm-hmm. Whales oh, stuff. Whales is stuff that comes out yeah, of Yeah, Amber. I thought, it was called, I thought it was called Amber Grease. Well, it, it has an thing. S, but I think it's pronounced Amber Grease. Yeah. Yeah. was like yeah. French or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, oh. Like Pinot Gris. Oh, uh, yes. I saw Master and Commander a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what Amber Grease is. Okay, this is I a stand scary corrected. opening. Uh, but uh, right, yeah. yeah, I think it was in that. Huh? You do say the No. I'm going to default to Sandra on this one. Wait, what's the question? Do you say ambergris? I think it's ambergris. Yeah, I think it's ambergris, too. I think. Too. I think well, this I'm show goes no further until we figure it out. <laughs> I thought it was French. Well, so would it be <laughs> re is peanut butter cups or <laughs> re yes. is? Well, we say Le Mans, well, not Le Mans. I only right. know it from watching the Ron Howard Moby Dick movie, maybe. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're old-timey. Well, yeah. I'm going off of how old time you guys send it i don't know anyway anyway i'm familiar with what you say okay, so how buddies. is it pronounced so i'm just gonna keep calling it ambergris like, like i said we say le mans we don't well, say Le how does it what is the oh, dictionary one ambergris ambergris well ones you, you could do it either way because look they're they're giving Amber you two Gris. pronunciations and you don't want to push gina you may snap I'm so very you... close to pre 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 menopause. <laughs> pre, pre, pre. Ambergris. Fine. Okay. Oh my god, no. Oh, no. I'll, I'll well, say it the way the settlers the robot said. Lady. Whatever. Uh, Google a, me right. A 35 man fishing crew working off Yemen netted uh, this find of a lifetime. They hauled in $1.5 million worth of whale vomit, which is what Ambergris is, according to Yahoo News. It's... Ambergris? God. Yeah, Yahoo yeah. News. Mm. Well, no... Let's hear the robot <laughs> say it. You're going to believe a robot over me and Sandra. Whatever. All Amber right. Gris. I hate you guys. Amber Gris. Okay, great. Fine. Yeah, anyway, no, it's wrong. a substance found in the digestive system of sperm whales. According to the UK's Natural History Museum, the substance is often called the treasure of the sea and floating gold because it's super rare. It's used in high end perfumes to make the scent last longer. And when the fishing crew. Hold took, on, labia yeah. or labia? <laughs> Obviously, oh. labia. Yeah. Okay, just, just trying to know how far out you guys are. That's <laughs> well, all. that's you're you're dangerously close to a Seinfeld joke. Remember the the, oh, the woman's name? body part. Yeah, Dolores. Dolores. Oh. Is it clitoris or clitoris? I I will tell you. I got into a very heated argument with my grandmother. Oh God! Now, my grandmother. My grandmother is like like Brian's grandmother. Mean, mean, mean. She's mean, and part of mean is correcting everyone around mm-hmm. them all all the time. And um, we got into oh. an argument because uh, I I said clitoris, and she's like clitoris. And then I Why was saying like, that in front of your grandma. We had a very TMI. strange relationship. <laughs> yeah. oh. And then we went to my deceased grandfather's oversized dictionary oh to oh. go look it up and see if it was, we had a big <laughs> argument at our house. And then now here's why my here's why my grandma's a bitch, because I remember this very clearly. She 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 would say she would she would go. Uh, Emery Ken- Kenrick is a doctor right. and he says clitoris. And I would go, well, Dr. Drew. Is a doctor. doctor, and he says uh, clitoris, or and she go. Every Kenrick's a doctor. Like somehow her right. doctor <laughs> friends was more of a doctor. Right. <laughs> somehow I couldn't have doctor friends, or mine were like you know yeah. Doctor Pepper or something. Yeah. Like she's got real <laughs> doctor friends, right. you know. So did we ever figure that out? Uh, we went and looked it up. 
And? Either way. Amber Grease? Not like Does she claim victory? Oh, yeah. Does she claim victory even after you looked it up? Is that both ways? She knows what she knows. You know, she knew what she knew. She walked away with her head held high. My grandma did, did that all the time, the fucking correcting. The, right. and, and speaking of the sea, uh, I was like, oh, grandma, I re- I re- you talk about Disneyland. I love Pirates of the Caribbean. She goes, mm. it's Caribbean. Caribbean. Right. Yeah. right. Thanks, grandma. Yes. <laughs> you don't know what Thanks. ride you were on. So- I think if you look up clitoris, clitoris, it just goes... Either way. Pick your poison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, hey, by it. the way, we don't need a fucking dictionary to have us flip a coin. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you settle fucking settle it. Right. That's, yeah. We're having an argument here. Yeah. Right. This is whatever, however you want to yeah, do it. Yeah, whatever. It's all on the what table. What do we need you for? Thank you. You're right. If you have to ask. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this fishing crew took this whale apart that they got in this net, and it was a 280-pound lump of amber grease in its belly. <laughs> now, do you want to know why, how this is formed? Because this is fascinating and disgusting. Mm. Scientists believe that the rare substance is produced because of the huge volume of cephalopods, like squid and octopus, that sperm whales consume. The whales are unable to digest the sharp beaks of these cephalopods. And on rare occasion, the mass of squid beaks and other biological material may be combined with a waxy secretion from the intestines. Mm. And that's how it's formed. Good name for G's V, Squid Beak. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> it connotes a lot of it, things. Talk about a rich man, poor man. Amber Gris is for, you know, high-end perfumes. Do you know what is for, I guess, low-end perfumes that they use to make the scent stay on longer? Mm-mm. Cat pee. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah. No. They mix in, like, a small percentage of, like, foul-smelling stuff, right? Yeah. The yeah. That's it. Not really since I yeah. learned yeah. what Premarin was named after. Oh, horse, yeah. horse pee. <laughs> Pregnant. Yeah. Pregnant horse pee. Yeah. Horse urine. Yeah. Not yeah. since then have I been so disgusted at a revelation, <laughs> Gina. I'm sorry. All right, let's do one more. Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, well, this is just if anyone's... Chris, what happened yeah. to Lee Marvin's divorce? <laughs> <laughs> I want some follow up. Some amber grease. I want to know if he <laughs> lost, if Lee he won. Lee Marvin's amber grease. Does Gene Hackman have tread on his back? Uh, Lee Marvin. Did he lose uh, money? Did he have to cut a check? Is it a precedent? Did he start this whole palimony thing? Marvin's Law? Mm hmm. Where's Wikipedia? is the first like notable case. Yeah. And, and the people call like Marvin settlements after that. There you mm-hmm. go. Oh. That's that's what I read. That's what I'm saying. Now he had do. to have. Or, right he had to have lost for it to become. Right. Yeah. 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 So. While while he's looking for that, after being canceled in 2020 due to coronavirus, the Philly Naked Bike Ride is scheduled um, for this year on August 28th. People in Philadelphia hop on their bikes. Bad Philly (laughs) weather for (laughs) naked cycling. Your fucking dad would have been the bell of that ball. (laughs) They ride around naked, promote body positivity, cycling safety, and promote the use of bikes instead of cars. Uh, Riders are expected to be naked, but they do have to wear masks. Well, we'll say this. If you are, in fact, <laughs> naked on a mountain bike, you will practice safety. That's right. You, if you're padded up, helmet and jock strap. Oh, yeah. and, Take a lot of chances. Yeah. You, you, there's a lot of wheelies with that. When yeah. your nuts are getting tangled with <laughs> spokes, like down. it's <laughs> lots of hand signals, lots of slow Thank it down. You. A lot of bells. <laughs> yeah. It kind of keeps you, keeps you honest. I think you're absolutely Ugh. right. I like that. All right. Let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad. Hold on. And that's the news. Oh. I can't take this anymore. Gina, Gina, that was the news with Gina Grad. All right, what did we find out about Lee Marvin? He All right, lost. So, yeah, so uh, he was ordered to pay his girlfriend Michelle Triola, who actually was go, who changed her last name to Marvin, so it was actually Marvin v. Marvin, mm. um, one hundred four thousand dollars for rehabilitation purposes. But the court denied her community property claim for one half of the three point six million which Marvin had earned during their six years of cohabitation. Mm. And the result it was the landmark palimony case. So mm-hmm. this is, yeah, this is uh, what pioneered went for it. these I concepts. Knew there was something there. All right. <laughs> let me uh, tell you about scottscheapflights.com. Scott's Cheap Flights. Travel the world and never pay full price again. People pay way too much for flights. Prices go up. They go down by hundreds of dollars even in the same day. So you could pay a different price than the person next to you on the exact same flight. They combine technology with a team of flight experts to monitor thousands of routes on major airlines all day, every day. When prices drop, 
they send members an email and they send them an alert so they'll never miss an amazing deal like to Europe or Japan for less than 300 bucks round trip on quality airlines, no less. No kickbacks from airlines. Their only goal is to send their members great deals. It's Scott's Cheap Flights, right, Dawson? Join for free at scottscheapflights.com slash Adam and never overpay for flights again. Again, join for free at scottscheapflights.com slash Adam. scottscheapflights.com slash Adam. All right, uh, Sandra, this has been uh, delightful. Thank you for the generous gifts. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I, I love your podcast. And I was li- listening to the one with, with Jack Tapper. Oh, the yeah. The Bar Rescue. I'm like obsessed with that show. That was really fascinating. And yeah, he's so... he's lived a life. Oh, my Taffer, God. Yeah. Taffer, that's Taffer, right. Taffer, Taffer. Okay. Yeah, that's, listen. Uh, there's, there's Taffers and Tappers Amber in, the, Chris, Amber in the zeitgeist right oh now. Oh, my God. Clitoris, clitoris. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing <laughs> off. Let's call oh the whole God. thing off. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is. <laughs> oh, we got see. more gifts? No, this is for you. Thank you. So you get the full. Oh, my Santa God. And then you also get the full. I'm going to give you. I'm putting my pants I'm going to give you a plug on the on the way out. Sandra Singh. Low, the bitch is back, streaming on demand June 23rd and uh, June 30th. Golden, Colorado, me doing stand up and us doing a podcast coming up uh, June 18th, 19th. Go down Corolla.com for all the live shows. Until next time, this is Adam for Sandra and Gina and Bald Say It. Mahalo. So I guess I have to fuck him. <laughs> 